Oh no! No, oh, everybody give up. Oh, not you. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not. You meant to. Okay then. So let me give a, a brief synopsis about what's happening, so we, we know where we're going. Um, so there's sort of like three storylines all going on at the same time at the moment. There's um, some kind of invasion or infiltration or plague of what appears to be called um, sea devils. Um, you saw them when they demolished or attacked Neville. Um, the people of the slums came to you, Bartleby, for help. And if you remember, they were banging at the gates of Lindo and Bartleby helped them. And then there was the girl who was brought to you, who you um, stopped a major wound, but then had to go back and cure malady on her because there might have been some kind of infection. And you spent some time out round about the slums area and picked up some leads about them and some discussions about them and I think Cyrus at the end of last adventure the last session had this idea um, from an idea world to say that maybe the ship that the sailors had came in was still in, on in port. Coupled with that Cyrus and Hazra have been following a group of mercenaries who appear to be getting ready for some kind of outing, some kind of journey. They overheard them in the bandy-legged dwarf um, talking about it. And then Hazra went off and spied on them as they left the um, Lindo via the North Gate. And they were ready for action. They definitely looked like they were ready for action. And I think... I'm right in saying, Hazard, that you saw them give something to the guards um, as they were coming back, maybe. Yes. Uh, yeah. It was definitely a bribe. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I put that to a bribe. Yeah. Uh, it, I think... Casually, they've done it before. Yeah. And uh, off, they, off they went. And then the... So that's another storyline. And then the other storyline is that originally the parties were being employed by the guild merchant to um, oversee some negotiations with traders from Airwood, which is further down to the southeast, southwest of Lindo. The guild, after suffering quite a lot of deaths of their major characters, major important officers, um, in the last adventure, they were making new trade agreements in the hope of trading for timber because they wanted to start building ships and actually making Lindo the centre of a major port or shipping um, empire. However, um, Neville got killed by the Sea Devils. Zack, who was the sort of like second in command, went to the merchants um, there was a bit of a hoo-ha um, between the party and the merchants. There was some making up involving present buying. Um, but that was really it. And there was some idea that the guild had taken Zack to Count Bastion. But then um, Bartleby, with all his commerce knowledge, sort of like thought, hang on a minute, that shouldn't have happened. Why is that happening? So we don't know whether or not the merchants are just winding the party up or doing some double dealing or maybe even not allowing Zack to well maybe taking him for a ride we don't know and so you are left with all these three storylines still up in the air and yeah I think we'll pick it up at the point, we, we'll go to the um, hairy hobgoblin. Um, just because I like to start adventures off in the hairy hobgoblin. Because it seems a good place that you know it's your table there in the corner. That is where you are allowed to sit. Um, Basil is a known ally to the party. Buys food and rabbits and game of Hasra. And so it's a safe place to sit 
and talk about tactics and ways forward. And we'll start off the session with Cyrus coming up with this idea that you had met the sailors, if you remember, and they mentioned something about passing an island and being attacked, etc., etc. And Cyrus came up with the idea that the ship or the boat that they actually um, arrived on may still be in the docks. Okay, so we'll start off from that point. And if Medivac just disappears into darkness, then we'll just... <laughs> As he, oh, he, he's just not on camera. All I could see was darkness. And I thought, oh, oh no. He's, he's there. He's there. He's there. Cool. Yeah, so Cyrus, you, you can... Um, start us off as you have this wonderful idea that you feel that you could share with the group. So I have this idea. You remember they're kind of bringing up a little bit about how he's on a ship and he saw the weird things happening, but then he was dropped off. What if the ship is still there? What if this uh, surfer, what if it's still at the dock? Maybe, you know, we can ask people there or, you know, see if we can find something ourselves. What do you guys think? That's, that seems a good idea. We can see what route they took and if they've been anywhere else or where they first landed. Because by the sounds of it, from what the Stoda was saying, the sea creatures or sea devils, they either got on that ship somehow and used it to transport them there or they followed it in the water. So that's where the ship birth first is most likely where they've landed first. So that would be a good starting point to track them down. Should we just barge in and say, hey, we're here to investigate your involvement with these possible sea devils, or should we uh, play a little more, more coy with our approach? It's probably. Probably be a little bit more coy, maybe, to use your phrase. Or we could do what Bartleby did with the merchants and maybe go outside and pick up some dandelions. Um, <laughs> that way. Well, I don't think that we need to do that since we haven't done things to earn their disfavor. <laughs> you know? Oh, not yet. Like reject Got helping it. a young man. Well, we're helping many, yeah, many, yeah, men with not dying to these devils. Um, all right. Let me finish. Uh, my my ale and then get another one me one more and then we'll head out okay so good so Sounds are you an appropriate plan to me are you going tonight or waiting till I tomorrow i think daytime would make more sense because there's more people there um otherwise it would just be trespassing probably and then trespassing i heard is uh bad i guess i don't know well, we'd have to get dandelions to make them not hate us in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I, I think dandelions, they disappear at night, right? I don't know whether or not dandelions exist in Odessa. I'll have to, th <laughs> have to think. We'll have to check the books. <laughs> yeah, I'll just have to check the rules, whether or not dandelions are actually... Uh, I, I think dandelions in Linda, or in the campaign of Odessa, are actually an aphrodisiac. I've just decided <laughs> on that. So, <laughs> so, so that's what, where the sailors that's where you're going wrong. So what <laughs> Cyrus was implying when he said that he was <laughs> that Bartleby should buy um go and pick um aphrodisiacs to give to the merchants or the sailors, <laughs> it seems to be so, somewhat um mind boggling to be the least. Okay yeah, then. Um, so you so everybody's like um sat um, enjoying the beverages um, of the night um, if anybody's got a streetwise roll they can roll it now for me take you up on that um. anyone else with street bikes no nope. um we kind of figured out i really didn't and we kind of no that that's absolutely oh, no i think gulliver used to have it, oh, uh, have if, it yeah. If, uh, yeah um Okay then, so you enjoy your drinks and you so are you lucking your roll by the way? I was thinking about it. Um just do it, just do it. I think I am gonna use my one of three. Okay. 
to, to flip that into a 16. I, I love it how Bartaby announces how many he's got. He's sort of like, my second, <laughs> my, my two <laughs> out of, my two I out of. I don't have one. <laughs> yeah. I don't have two. I have three. But when it's one an hour, don't I? Mm. I have two action points. You guys get yeah, to that's what I say. actions you can take. But, but, this, this is where I get to shine. I always think it's hey, funny hey, when, hey. when. I got three on both. I'm just saying. That's, that's not ahead. It, it's Cyrus, please. <laughs> Bartleby likes to do it, but he also said, um, "I will take my second of my two action points." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have fun everywhere, so <laughs> you could always use one of your three luck points as uh, the third right. action point. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes do. Sometimes do. Okay, then. So. The, the drinks are flowing and everything seems to be going well. Um, are you using luck yet, Bartaby? Yep. Yeah. Yes, I am yeah. using uh, um, luck. So I'm going to say that you, when you were discussing with the sailors down on the docks, you actually, they actually at one point um, told you or mentioned in passing the name of the boat that they came in on the ship. And it was called um, the Floating Flotsam, as in things oh, that fl okay. uh, float out of debris of ships. I'll pop it in the um, chat so you can see it. Floating mm -hmm. Flotsam. Like that. That's a name that instills confidence in your ship. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's a bit like. The, floats. It's, a bit, it's a bit like. Maybe. The, what was the bandy leg? What's Melissa? Still there, it definitely it, does. I mean, almost late. <laughs> yes. What, what? It's, it's just a ship called uh, the Sinking Jetson. Well, there is one actually, but it's not in port <laughs> at the moment because oh. they they can't be in port at the same time because it's a bit like matter and antimatter. They're yes. sort of like diametrically opposed, you know. Uh, what's Melissa's bar called? Bartleby. The drowning stallion. The dry drowning stallion, yeah. Um, the floating flotsam. And of course, the ship that Hengis came in on um, was called the. I don't remember. It was three years <laughs> ago. <laughs> <laughs> It was. I think it was called the wave. How do you expect you to remember your character from three years ago if you can't remember the ship? <laughs> yeah. The ship appeared in a couple of episodes. Hengist has been I on think, every episode. Since. I think it was called the Wave Crest, and it was That's it. right. The wave I, crest. I remember the captain's name. It was Captain Seaside. Yeah, that is correct. Who was um, Gulliver's um, had a, a thing for contact? Yeah. Okay. So you um, remembered this. Bar to be as the n night goes on. Um, uh, Cyrus, just roll your um, willpower. Let's see um, how much of the night you actually keep with your alcohol. Um, roll my will oh, willpower. Right. Yeah, down here. got it. Da, da, da. Oh, I yeah. love this part of your character. You know, Thanks yeah, awesome. you, you, you have exactly um, what you say you are going to have and the the night passes quite uneventfully within the hairy hobgoblin it's probably getting about it's gone um 10 bells um it's all getting close to just after midnight and you're all sort of like thinking you know it's about time to go probably the only people left in the tavern are the drunks who are all the sad, lonely men who are alone, slumped over a ta tavern of, of ale. And the barmaids have logged off and they've gone for the night. And Basil is sort of like um, cleaning up and sort of like tidying up and, you know, spreading the spillages across his bar um, in an attempt to clean it. And it's almost like you're sort of like busy chattering and you you notice that he's busy cleaning, for want of a better word, and something almost like dawns on him. And he comes around and he comes over to the um, table and he says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry to disturb you all. He says, somebody here was looking for you all late earlier on tonight. The, the merchants 
I told them to, to seek me out here when they're ready for our help. Hmm. He didn't look like a merchant to me, Mr. Bartleby. No, not a merchant. Hmm. Now let me think. What could he have been? And he's just sort of like starts to ponder and gets distracted by a spillage on your table and starts to um, mop it up. He said, hmm, not a merchant. Do you know, I'm not too sure what he was, to be honest with you. Why is that? Did, did he just look like a common townsfolk? Um... Common townsfolk, no. Definitely mm. not a common townsfolk. Hmm. Hmm. And he absentmindedly sticks his cloth into a tankard to clean it and says, Oh, I remember why he seemed odd. He was armoured. Hengist is armoured. No, <laughs> not that, not that shiny stuff. Um, something more uh, blackened and rigid. Some kind of hide, I think it was. Very smart, though. Very smart indeed. Had a a cloak with a hood on it as well. And, hmm, I might, mathematics is not one of my greatest skills, you understand, as Hazra very frequently tries to diddle me out of coinage, but I'm sure he had two swords or two weapons on his belt. But like I say, my maths ain't that good. That's math for um, Bartleby and Cyrus, just in case you needed the translation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering, like, what else they, they don't need the translation, oh they need to get it right. The Swedish. Yes. <laughs> and, it, and it's tomato. <laughs> <laughs> For some other reason, we, we've all swapped um, places on the grid. I don't know why. But there you go. Who am I? Who am I? It was just Captain and Medivac you had swapped. Oh. Drink well, drink. actually, Mr. Pickles was <laughs> Mr. Pickles was the GM, so take it away, Mr. Pickles. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, he sort of goes, I'm sure he had two swords or two weapons. Yet, Definitely two. One on either side. Did he Did he say why um, he, he was seeking us out? Oh, now. He wasn't seeking all of you out. Now, who was it? And he sort of like has a look round the, the, the table. Hmm. I know. He says, I remember who it was now. It was Mr. Azra and Mr. Cyrus. That's who he was looking for. He came right up to my bar, bought nothing, I may add. Bought nothing at all, not even a glass of dirty water. And he came up to my um, bar and he looked over to your table here and says, where are they? And I, me, I said, I said, I said, who would they be? And he said, Mr. Well, he didn't use your proper title, Mr. Hazra and Mr. Um, Cyrus. He just said, the, the sorcerer and the hunter. And I said, who would that be then? He said, the sorcerer. And I think he's, their names are Cyrus and Hazra. And I said, you know, kind sir, I haven't seen them all day. I said, they were in here yesterday, but they, as you can see, their table is empty. I haven't seen them all day. And he said, do you know when they will be back? And I said, I am not their keeper, sir. They come and go and they just pay very good rates to me. And Hazra, I said, um, he doesn't even stay in the town. He has a little place out in the country. Uh, where he keeps and he keeps and, and brings me rabbits and other small game. And he seemed very interested about that, Mr. Asra. 
He said, oh, not in Lindo yet then. And I said, no, he lives out of Lindo. And then he said, oh, what about that Cyrus guy? And I said, oh, Mr. Cyrus is a stranger. And I said, no offence, Mr. Cyrus. No offence, but you know what I mean. And I said, he, he can summon up fire. I'm sure one day we couldn't get the main stove to work. And he just clicked his fingers and whoom, bash, there it was, on fire. I said, oh, he, he's a powerful sorcerer, Mr. Cyrus. Oh, I've heard that he can conjure up fire, this guy said. And I said, yeah, I think he can. And he said, and is he powerful? I said, wow, he can light a fire just with clicking his fingers. That's power to me, I said. And he said, oh, and where, where would this Cyrus stay? And I said, well, probably with his order in Lindo. Oh, and he, he, he nodded at that as if he had gained some interest in you. But so what you're trying to say is this, this person looking for us and knew us did not offer to pay my tab. No. And to be honest with I you, <laughs> to, to be honest with you, I was surprised how much he didn't know. Because every time I was saying things, he kept asking more and more questions about you both. And I was... Basil, 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 stop, please, please. But why did you tell him so much about us when, when you know we, we are like to... Uh, my, my privacy, myself. You? I bring you good food. I bring good meats to, to, to cook. You know what you I'm your... like, Mr. Asra. And now you're telling people where I live? No. I, I don't know where no. you live. You are very no, but, secretive about that 61% role. Very. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, all I said was that you didn't live in the Lindo. Because you that's all I know. Say that. You, you, all you had to say was, he's not here right now. He may be back later. Well, now I know what I have to say to all your callers. Uh, and what about your lady callers, Mr. Cyrus? Shall I say that you'll come back later? Just don't tell them my actual name. Oh, they they knew it. Ah, damn it. They knew All it. Right. Yeah. They were certainly... There was a lot of giggling when they were talking about you as well. All right, I might be back, but probably not. Right. So, but keep, keep it cold for me. So, so um, when, have, so when uh, people ask for you, I am to say, I do not know when they will be back. There we go. Because we don't know either. Right. Um, true. <laughs> we just don't know. Well, can I just I say? So, so what did this person want? Did he tell you what he wanted, or did he just want to speak to us, and that was it? No, he just asked questions. But I, I, what, I don't what, think, I don't think if I say to you, anybody who inquires about you in the future, if I just say, I'm sorry, they're not here, I don't think I will get the coinage that they give me for giving information. But, you know. Did I, you tell them my exact residence? I don't know where you live, Mr. Cyrus. Right, I always good. presume it will be with those fairy folk that, you know, those sorcerers that you hang around with. Oh, oh, yeah. The sorcerers, not the fairy folk. Yeah. But I did. I, um, I just said, I mean, I, I don't think it's a secret, Mr. Cyrus, that you're with the red crowd. No, no, no. As long as I'm not the blue crowd. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, thank you for keeping us anonymous uh we're gonna my pleasure head off. and next time i will say to you uh, i do not know when they will be back well well done yeah, my that's, friend that, that, that's now, now, this this what would this person look like did you say already he's using dark armor and he had Two swords and a cloak he had one mm. of those pointy beards oh two swords that's right uh, uh, or, oh, Mr. Cyrus, you just, they weren't straight swords. Were they, I, I want to describe the swords that the cult from, like, you know, the last, like, last three sessions ago, 
that we attacked. Oh. I want to describe that that kind of sword. Do they look like that? Oh yeah, definitely curved. Definitely curved. And he had one of those beards, those pointy mm. beards. What? Well, uh, what is it called? A sheepy? No. A horsey? Might be a sheepy. Oh, it's named after some kind of animal. I'm sure of it. Oh, he says a goatee. That's <laughs> what he had. Uh, I, re I remember so, now. So that means he's obviously evil. I had a girlfriend that <laughs> had a goatee once, I tell you. Yeah, it looked like the kind of guy that probably did. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't last very long. <laughs> Although I did get some money for, you know, I used to sit her in the corner of the bar and people used to pay uh, pay did, to stroke her beard. Did she sound like this? <laughs> That would be a sheep, Mr. Cyrus. I oh, okay. know what a sheep sounds like. She sounded like more like <laughs> she sounded more like ah, like that, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. Apart from when she slept, and then it was more <laughs> like that. He says, "Excuse right, me," I'm, and he turns I'm around pull, and pulls out, something uh, out. Two silver pieces from from my uh, my dainty purse and uh, give it to him to tip for keeping. <laughs> my us Mr. Cyrus, what a dainty purse you have there! <laughs> <laughs> that is so dainty. I didn't realize that you would have something as dainty as that. Oh, I'll just say I'm a little flamboyant. Two, we all know it. Two silver coins. Mm -hmm. Not as much as he paid, but I am very grateful for it, Mr. Cyrus. Very grateful. You know grateful. I always tip well. Yes. Except when I need to. And if you ever need something a little bit bigger than, than your dainty purse, then I know a good leather smith, Mr. Cyrus. You know, when you're rich and famous and you're carrying around bags of gold, you maybe need something a little bit bigger. Or silver, you might need something a little bit bigger than that, that dainty purse of yours. I'd agree, but no one wants to pay me as much. All right, um, should we head off to the uh, to the ship, guys? Uh, I, I think maybe we should get some rest and then go in the morning. And oh, what, sorry. With all the animal noises it's we've just, been making, <laughs> the, the ale has maybe has gone a little bit too deep for us to make progress tonight. From both sides. All right. Um, okay then. So, I totally agree, but. Basil, my friend, before you go, do you have a room spare tonight? Oh, he says, one moment. And he, you hear him going up the stairs. He goes up the stairs in a minute. And you hear him going. And somebody says, what are you up? Sorry, sir. And then he goes to the, what? No, sorry, sir. Hello? No, sorry, sir. No, Mr. Asra. <laughs> we, we, we all fall I'm... up. I'm deeply upset, Hazra, that you didn't even think of remembering that there's an open invitation for accommodation at my house. No, I Mansion. Did, I did not want to presume. <laughs> I, 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 I have thought, said many times there's an open invitation. I, I, say I did not want to presume because I... I you could you sleep on I the lawn. You're in the way, Hazra. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Picture te a teepee in I, the middle of the Could, could I bring my cow? <laughs> <laughs> could I bring Brutus? <laughs> uh, right. no, that so, is very kind of you, uh, um, um, Hengist. I will quite happily sleep in your in your garden or, or in your room, whichever. In his room? His well, room. You saw like room, bunking together, is this? I'll wait till you're asleep, I promise. <laughs> you can have your own room, that's right. <laughs> what? Kangaroos? Oh, yeah, sorry. Bunny Box was just telling me that your cameras are swapped around. Then? Mm. And then he said, she said, um, kangaroo's hair looks much better than Medivac's. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to put a wig on I now. have you know. I have <laughs> <laughs> It's when he brings out a dead finch and put <laughs> I don't know a Mr. Cyrus, but I only know a Mr. Jim. I guess. 
<laughs> what is your name, Jim? <laughs> yes. Oh, one of my one of my many aliases. Okay. Tell him your name, Cyrus. So I just need to get sleeping arrangements sorted. So um, Bartaby and Ben, you'll be going back to um, the Temple of Amriel and Marwath, I assume. Um, Cyrus, yes. you'll be going back to Red Red Robe City. You know your um, lodgings in Lindo to the Red Order. Hazra and Hengis, are you both going back to um, Hengis's house? Is that the plan? Cast the Hengis. The yes, I'm a little bit concerned. Or Hazra's a little bit concerned about the fact that Basil's given away the fact that Hazra sleeps alone in the middle of nowhere. I'm sure you'd be fine. It's okay, Hazra. Oh. We now know where to find that person. It's going to be in one of two places. Unless, uh, unless he's hidden at my place as I go there drunkenly. Um, but maybe not alone. Okay. Depends so, if, if stopped by a broth on the way. Who knows? Um, could you all, please, including a roll for Ben, please, could you all roll for me an insight check? Dun, 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 dun. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 oh. The crits start coming out. Um, I think it's you don't notice anything because you're not it's That's it's not surprising. It's only ten to eight, so you're not going to use your <laughs> one look point. Uh nothing from Mr Um Hasra. Um a standard success from um Cyrus, a standard success from Ben, and oh, a very good standard success um, from Bartaby. Um, okay, then, so if you succeeded in your insight role, you get this strange feeling um, that as you walk back to your, um, your allocated abodes, that you are being um, watched and however whenever you look round or you know try to sense you know anybody try to see sorry any see anybody around you there there doesn't seem to be anyone there the streets are very dark um, there's a few lights every now and again and you see the normal patrolling of the city guard with their um, lanterns on the end of their sticks and it's not that you actually feel that somebody is following you it feels that you've been watched it's definitely a feeling that somebody is watching you rather than following you but it does give you that feeling that you suddenly turn round or look um, but you know maybe there is somebody in the um, shadowy back street out of sight but you don't actually um see anyone and um, bartaby and ben as you walk back to your church there's um, a few um guards that pass you bartaby and sort of like says roll your friends for the guards for me please and said oh ha. evening mr bartaby i hope you're doing all right yeah sir uh is this your uh, yeah. is this your boy here? This is uh this is Ben. He was from uh, north and uh, near Uben Falls, uh Uben Falls, uh, and he's uh, joined me at the church, um, serving oh. under Mara. Oh, hey, uh, right, a bit young for that, but never mind. Well, be, be safe on your way, Sir Bartleby. You know, a bit late for you, you theists to be out. You know, you know, don't know what's lurking in the back streets around here. You know. That's true, officer, um, but Amriel will keep me safe. I have faith in her. Um, Hengis, roll your um, famed warrior skill. You might get a fumble and then you can get an increase. <laughs> I was hoping for a fumble. Uh, yeah. Um, you, sort of like a, a drunk comes past you and um, Hazra and he sort of like staggers back and he sort of like, I don't know who the hell he is, walking around as if he owns the place and sort of like staggers back home and you you all arrive at your chosen destinations somewhat the the best way to describe it is apprehensiveness 
you feel that you've been watched but you couldn't see anybody or anything but you almost like have that feeling of approaching dread and you you all don't sleep well during the night but um, Cyrus and Bartleby and Ben you manage to get magic points back and devotion pools topped up so they'll be up to the, the maximum amount that you can have um, remember luck does not re that refreshes per session um, not per evening or long rest and you wake up all the next morning somewhat you've had a restful sleep a restful sleep that you remember waking up hearing sounds and being puzzled about about things and having that feeling that maybe there was somebody at your window or somebody outside and you feel very unrested is definitely the um, word to look for but th there's no roles um, needed um, at all love the greek helmet you missed it all right captain was um because i'm gming and playing gming i'm gming and playing the game <laughs> okay um so the next morning let's say that you meet up with everybody probably at the southern gate um that leads to um down down to the docks so if you remember um this was the area that leads down to the slum areas where there is some docking options down there but the one that people enter and leave in is at this gate here and so that is the gate that you actually venture out is there anything that anybody wants to do before you leave uh, i'll sure make sure i have my glaive with me that's it okay i presume um, that you have your weapons. standard practice for barlaby yeah. Yeah, Angus will have his, his normal equipment. He, he does have his shield, but he's got it over his shoulder hmm. um, just in case he wants to use it. Okay. Yeah, as uh, the other day, before in fact, before last week, Peter, another spear, so it's not <laughs> a spear made to his specification, but it is a spear by any other name. I think we should take um, start a rolling... Um, bid spear uh, count uh, yeah no <laughs> so um what's the possible chances of hasra losing his spear through you need to do one of those things that you tie a piece of rope onto it or oh a, a spear of um, a spear of recall yeah a harpoon yeah, you, throw it and you pull it back <laughs> or get cyrus to learn um Somebody. Uh, 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 yeah so you can just <laughs> yeah. pull but here's your spear <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have any of that cool stuff. Uh, no, you uh, just have battle magic. Um, yeah, I just got. I, I used to be adventurer like you, so I got my spear in my knee. Yeah, <laughs> he's probably aiming it slightly higher. You know, it's like in your chest. <laughs> you know, chest. Key, key bab. So spears are just backups for me. Yeah. Um, so when you get down to the gate, you can see that there's the normal guards on there doing their classic making people fill in forms or answering questions but then generally taking the sheet of paper and just binning it um, it seems more of a routine rather than a necessity and actually leaving Lindo via this gate is not monitored at all and the guards um, recognize um, you Bartleby and sort of like head as you head through and they, they nod and sort of like greet you and you ask them probably ask one of the guards about the ship and they say yes um, um there, there's it's having a bit of issue they say Bartleby and they say it's actually at the the furthest dock um in the line so it's actually here and it's actually moored to this side of the dock. And they they sort of like look at you and say, just be careful, Mr. Bartleby. I don't think that um, ship is very... You're not planning on setting sail with it, are you? 
Oh, no, of, of course not. Um, we were just uh, looking into it, uh, matters of, of Lindo and, and whatnot. Um, you said there was an issue with it. Is it something that I shouldn't be handling? Well, yeah. Like, um, did they, they saw illegally like bring something in? Oh, no, no. You'll, you'll see it when you see the ship, Mr. Bartleby. You'll definitely notice it. It's not something that <clears throat> you can't notice. I see. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'll, you, I'll be on my way. Let you get back to your, your duties. And you all start moving down the path and towards the last pier. And as you walk past, there seems to be a, a huge amount of activity. There seems to be um, carts and barrels and sacks being loaded on and off the ships. There seem to be people on board the ships sorting out rigging and rope. Um, it's very noisy and busy. And it seems to be, you know, a, a hive of activity. And as you get further and further along the line, you actually see that there's two ships moored at this pier here. But there's only one moored at this pier and as you pass that second pier beyond it there seems to be like hardly any activity at all there seems to be no loading or offloading or anything like that it seems mighty quiet up at that end and you notice that there's no carts coming to the ship and there's no um, people going on backwards and forwards on the pier if anything, there seems to be a group of people sat at the end of the pier. They seem to be engaging with some kind of um, dice game or knuckles or something like that. And they're just sort of like in a, a small group. Um, can you all roll your boating skill? I think you have a boating skill. It's definitely standard. <laughs> it's a standard skill. Yeah. <gasps> but also <will> be... <laughs> I know one thing about boats. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Well, what did uh, you say, Bartleby? The I, I, I know things about boats. Well, Bartleby obviously ships. knew a, a sailor in a, in a previous life or something like Just that. Just because he's a priest. <laughs> <laughs> um, you probably um, ner um, he um, healed and nursed a sailor back to health once and in return he showed you round his galleon and you you sort of like notice that this ship as you get closer and closer is actually it doesn't look right at all and there's two things you notice Bartleby the rest of you did anybody else make the roll and um, Medivac um so Hazra, Hazra, yeah, Hazra, you, it's because it says Medivac at the top of your thing, so. <gasps> oh, oh, it reset. Oh, oh, oh it's, you didn't change sorry. it after you, the, yes. you took, pulled your power cord um, out, yeah. Yes. That's, that's embarrassing. Honey, How dare you. And, and um, <laughs> Hazra, you, <laughs> you, you're Some probably, rude. you're probably not the best around boats, but no. you, you do notice that both you and Bartby notice that something's not right here. And the things that you notice are twofold. The first one, compared to all the other ship that you pass, this one is a lot lower in the water. Okay. And so, which could mean a lot of things, but you, you're you not too sure what it means in your boating Same skill. Um, but as your boating skill, you're, you're not you notice it but not too sure what is causing it but the other thing that you notice is that the masts are not sort of like perpendicular and up straight like the other masts this one seems to have a bit of a tilt or a list on it and it seems to be um, a little bit lower in the water and sort of like listing to one side and the if you imagine a clock face Instead of going straight up to the 12, the main mass and all the other, the mizzen mass and everything, is probably about uh, like an 11 o'clock. You know, so it, it's quite a bit of a, uh, a tilt over. 
and you notice this. The rest of you, you just think it looks like a normal ship. But the, the, you, um, Hazra and Bartleby, you sort of like notice this as you're walking um, towards it. So there will be a time to have a discussion, if you wish, before the people round playing Knuckles or Dice will actually hear you. If you wish. Uh, Bartleby will mention to the others before we get there, uh, sitting pretty low for a ocean vessel. Usually yeah. that low would be a, a river vessel. I, I notice this. Perhaps it is sinking. Maybe there's water getting into it somehow. That would explain why those masts are kind of crooked. It doesn't doesn't look yes. quite right. Because where, where, where do the masts go into the boat? Does it go all the way through to the bottom? And if they're bending, maybe there's a hole in the bottom and the water's coming through. They, it has to be so just, dramatic. <laughs> the water is rushing through. <laughs> I wasn't just Rinda, sorry. It's talking. Talking. Well, it looks like the sailors are just playing games, so they must not be too concerned about their boat. Maybe it's an exotic kind of boat. <laughs> what? Is that? I, I would think that they'd be more concerned if they're just playing dice games out there and their ship's tilted and possibly sinking. Bartleby, my, my my friend, my knowledge of boats is is very limited. I have been on perhaps one boat with with you, my friend, uh, but something does not look right. I saw this straight away. How something does not look right. Um, Hengist, what what do you think? You've been on a, <laughs> on a long voyage before. What what was Hengist as well? All right. <laughs> boats, boats come in all different shapes and, and sizes. The what and, and qualities is, is all I know. The wave crest that I journeyed on was a huge ocean-going ship that mainly catered for the people um, rather than cargo. But uh, that's all. Um, Bartleby, roll your um, streetwise for me, please. Yeah, um, as you as you're approaching more and more, um, you notice that there's actually a total of four people playing this dice or knuckles game, and you they're quite clearly not the same as the sailors that you saw yesterday. Um, you sort of like as you walk towards them, you notice that they're a little bit better dressed, uh, more refined, and you. Think think this is probably like um the captain uh, second in command maybe you know one of the master sailors or one of the maybe the ship's doctor or something but you you definitely think they're not common garden sailors you think they're probably the owners of the boat or people who are invested in the boat Good to know. Um, you won't get involved. Barlaby is just kind of puzzled how to approach them um, in questioning. Moment. Um, Here's a hint. <laughs> Money. <laughs> That's Money. a good idea. Um, Usually... Cyrus, maybe you'd like to, to lead with that tactic. Or supply the money. What's this? What is I feel like I should tell them to take Hengus's money. <laughs> <laughs> Hengus isn't carrying any cash. Hengus oh, doesn't oh, need oh. cash. Hengus' word is good enough. Mm. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> I guess my, my question here is how are we approaching them for, for information here? The, uh, an the answer to this is quickly at the moment. You're getting what? closer and closer to them. So okay. you either need to act soon or stop walking. It won't look it won't look it won't look suspicious at all. <laughs> it is so let's, just, let's just motivate ourselves to move forward into these people. All right. Hello, my friends. What what are you playing? And they they sort of like um, about a busy busy sort of like down playing. Um, dice or knuckles or some game and they they sort of like um hear you 
Um, you think they've definitely heard you because they almost like look up um, to see you. Um, roll, roll your influence for me, Hazra. Hmm. Oh, come on. You beautiful thing. 31 out of 43. Yeah, and they sort of like, um, sort of like look at you, and they, you, you see that they have this recognition that you're some kind of um, country folk, um, somebody who's not totally at home um, with life in the city, and sort of like look, look at you, and and they sort of like, almost like dismiss you, um, as if to say, country folk. You know, and they, they go back to um, rolling their um, dice. I have an idea. You guys have a have one more seat? Maybe I can uh, pitch it on a game? And they, they, they sort of like um, look up and they obviously uh, cast a glance up and down and they, they almost like see that you how you're dressed and that you've got this um, massive two meter um, glaive um, in your um, hand um, as, as it uh, probably looking quite foreboding, you know, and f mm -hmm. uh, towards them. And um, well, well, your um, influence. All right. Uh, Twenty one out Yeah, they sort of like um, look at you um, up and down and sort of like say, we play for money, you know, not weapons. How much? The, just roll um, a, a perception check, Cyrus. <laughs> the same roll, huh? <laughs> oh, that's spooky, isn't it? <laughs> it's really weird. Fixed. No, uh, it. Uh, so, so oh my, you got the same program I've got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you just um hear one of them um make make a uh a, a comment about um something about size and overcompensating and or compensating oh, really? for um this sort of like they this sort of like one of them sort of like says it to the the other one. And um, that there's a bit of um, a, a snigger, and uh, as, as Hasra hears this, she will uh, he will say to to cut the two um, Cyrus says says don't do it. If you take it out, you'll knock them into the water. Uh, it, sorry, it's Hasra responding to what the two people said. No, he's probably whispering to my ear, right? Yes, responding to them. Yeah. 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 Is it? The, well, what I, I, I just lift, lift up the hand say, I got it, I got it. Um, I pull out my dainty little purse. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you, you, put it does, the, just make a perception check. Does it, just, does it have roses on it? Um, as I said, I, I am a little flamboyant uh, with my uh, my interior. Um, just make a perception attire. check. Attire. I should yeah. probably better way of saying that word. <laughs> yeah. Um, other than posterior, I put down what seems to be a proper amount of coin coinage. Yeah, on on uh, my side, on a I don't know whatever seats left or whatever, and uh, see if I can join their there's dice a, rolling game. There's an upturned bucket. Um, just make your perception roll again for me. Again. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you you notice. <laughs> Uh, there, there's some uh, as you bring out your dainty little purse. There's some glances um, neck between people, and they sort of like look at you two meter long um, staff um, glaive sort of like thing, and then look at the dainty mm -hmm. purse that you bring out. And um, they what appears you think is either the captain or the second in command um, sort of like looks at you, and he, he sort of like eyes you up and down and then says we're having none of your magic this is a mundane game no magic what magic. are you talking about i'm a, i'm not a magic guy you What's will that? you will actually you have to um, wear attire depicting your robe your order so 
it will be quite obvious um, and that's a rule so it will be mm. quite obvious that you are from the um, red the order of the phoenix it's one of the negatives of all the power you have all right don't worry don't worry we'll keep this game uh, nice and fun and they, what he sort of like looks um, sort of like gestures to a, an upturned bucket that it looks not the best clean or anything like that and a little bit too low for you probably and mm -hmm. you sort of like uh, settle back and they sort of like um, uh, seem to be playing some kind of Yahtzee game so there seems to be six dice that they're rolling and then it's almost like adding up the score and they're trying to get two of a kind or all the sixes or all the fives and you have three goes to roll the dice and then you can pick which ones you re-roll and there seems to be some kind of betting going on and the um he sort of like looks the the captain sort of like um gestures to an upturned bucket and then he looks at you the rest of you the other three of you and says this ain't a spectator sport you know Oh, they're just here to check out what boats uh, that maybe we can use Ships. for some transportation later. Ships. Is this your boat? Ship. It's our ship. Ship. Sorry, ship. Ship. My bad. Well, Is this they, your ship right here? They can go and talk. Go and talk to the harbor master. He he'll like be able to tell you which um which boat to um get on. i will be fine. Okay, it's your it's your turn to roll, Mister. Jim. Um, Jim. <laughs> oh, just Jim. Okay, then. Yeah, just Jim. Right, just Jim. My, my, fa my, my, my parents were very creative. Here, here we go, just Jim. <laughs> so, um, the, the bet in, the bet in is one silver piece from all of us. So that would be five silver pieces that are in the pot at the present moment in time. And yeah, it, it, it's your go. So, um, roll the dice and you know there's six of them so roll them and see what comes up i roll them go ahead then what does that mean what, what, what so you if do? you roll a six-sided die um uh -huh. six times so don't do six d6 oh no six d6 is uh, add them up don't do that just do um one after another i would be able to see but so you get a six uh, sorry, a two, a two, ooh, a six, a five. Uh, right, so you've got a two, two twos, a six, a five, a six, and a three. One, two, three. So um, now you have the option. Um, what would you like to keep? And what would you like to re-roll? Uh, I'll keep the... Uh, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to keep the sixes. Okay, so you will have um, two sixes and you will be rolling four dice. Now, before you roll them, you mm. have a choice to bet more silver pieces. I'll put down uh, three more silver pieces. Right. So that would be four and um, you've put in four and the captain seems to offer a four and says that you probably won't get any more sixes at all and you never win with just two sixes and he puts four in as well um so there's actually nine ten silver pieces in the pot so you can now roll your four um dice um, again so the two sixes are kept and you're rolling four dice now um as we're doing this, I'm going to take out my my uh, water skin that's full of um, uh, wine, drink some of it, and then offer for them to drink some. And one of them says, what is it? Wine. Wine? Yeah. No. We have the it's... hard stuff. We don't have dainty purses and dainty mouthfuls of wine. And he, well, he, he I, I hands pull, out, <laughs> pull out my bottle of ale. He, he, he pulls out a bottle that seems to be corked. And he sort uh -huh. of like clamps his teeth around the cork and, and pops it out and um, takes a swig of it. Uh -huh. And and sort of like back, 
backfills it slightly and offers it to you. I'll uh, I'll accept it as yeah. I take my next roll. Okay, so before you do that, are, are you drinking some? Yeah. Yeah, okay, roll your insurance then. Yeah. That's never a good news. Yeah, and you sort well, of like... I'm going to do a, a, a luck roll. Really a quick. luck roll, okay. Ooh, he's down to two bar to be the same as you now. <laughs> No. <laughs> so you sort, man, it kills me. you sort of like um, quite confidently um, knock some of this liquor back and it turns out to be some kind of sailor's brew of rum and um, fermented stock or something and it sort of like hits the back of your throat and it comes out you sort of like cough and they, they all sort of like laugh at you and they say yeah stick to your dainty wine <laughs> and sort of like snatches the bol uh, bottle off you there's ten silver you, pieces you guys don't play around <laughs> there's ten silver pieces in the pot and you've got four dice to roll alright let's do it so we got two sixes. Da, da, da. Oh, sorry, my bad. Ooh. Ooh got one. Oh, okay. So you have now got three sixes. Three sixes. Okay. Yeah. And you will now have one last roll, which will be three, um, three dice. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you want to um, keep the fives and maybe go for like a full house, three of one and three and three or four and one. Or you can go, keep going forward with the um, going for the full house, the Yahtzee. I'll just do it. I'm going for Yahtzee. Um, I, I'm definitely do, not going to get it, but I'll go. Do go you anyways. want to put any more um, money in the pot? Yeah, I'll I'll put down three more. Three more, yeah. so that'll make thirteen um, silver pieces in it. And mm -hmm. the captain smiles and looks at the three sixes and your three dice. He says, "I'll see your four, and put in another two. So there's now twenty silver pieces in the pot. Now you have a choice now." Mm -hmm. You can either bow out and get nothing. He'll get the pot. Or you can put another two silver pieces in and roll your dice. I'll put another two silver pieces in. Okay. So I think that that makes about 22 silver pieces and you've got three dice to roll. He says, come on then, show me what you're made of. Three dice. See if, see if what luck I got left, right? <laughs> yeah. You can use a point of luck, by the way, to re-roll any of these dice if you wish. Mm. All right. Three, two, one. No. Four. No. Three. And no. Ah, oh, they, they all they all laugh and say, yeah. <laughs> and the captains are like, puts his hand around the um, the pile of gold and says, thank you, land lover. And sort of like, it takes it uh, all onto himself. And um, the um, one of the other sailors is sort of like says, one of the other officers sort of like says, oh, we'll have a good time tonight. He says, what do you think? It's not your bloody money. It's mine. I'm going to have a good time. There's... There's a certain lady that's got my name on it for tonight, I think. And they sort of like um, laugh and take a, a, a swig um, out of the bottle and they offer it to you again. <clears throat> I'm not as tough as you guys. You guys, you guys stick with that. I will stick with my dainty stuff. Yeah, they sort uh, of what kind of uh, what kind of good places is there around here for a drink, by the way? And you. They, they, they sort of like point along the um, row. And so all mm. these, probably one every other of the buildings that you can see on the map is some kind of a tavern of some kind of um, various oceanic and seafaring names from the, the clam 
and the giant clam, you know, right the way through to the um, jetsum, um, mm -hmm. the sinking jetsums there, and so forth and so on. He says, take your pick. There's all, all of them. I got worms in the biscuits and probably gob in the wine. Where do you guys go? Where do you guys go then? And he's, he's sort of like, um, the captain sort of like, um, has put the money in a, a, a hefty little pouch and says, I'm going to a lady's that I know very well. And she's going to give me my money's worth thanks to you. Good luck with that, my man. How oh, long are you he guys said, sticking around? You guys, you, you guys says, going somewhere soon? Or are you guys sticking around town for a bit? He always says, well, I'm going, mister. He says, I don't need luck. I know exactly what I'm doing. And he rubs his hands together like this and they all sort of like laugh. And one of them says, that's not what the woman said at the last inn. And they all <laughs> laugh and everything. And he says, shut your mouth. Otherwise, you'll be in the crow's nest on the next journey if we ever get a fixed. What, the I crow's want to laugh nest? With them. I'm try what, I'm trying what I'm trying to do is trying to create some sort of cr uh, camaraderie. Oh, you're trying to uh, fit in with your dainty I'm trying purse. to fit in just a bit, <laughs> not too much, obviously, but I'm trying to fit in because I'm trying to, you know, prove that I'm not here to cheat them out. I'm just trying to, really what I'm trying to do is delve out some information, but at the same time, not be too weird, weird out. Okay, then. So, um, roll your deceit for me. <sighs> This one, I'll, if I screw up, I'll happily roll my luck. Oh! 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 <laughs> yeah. Amriel is watching over you tonight. That's all Perfect. I can say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, yeah. they sort of like um, hum and ha, and they sort of like, um, um, you know, you know, you know, Mr. Jim, just Jim, just Jim, you know, the, the, where we're going, the, the best place to go, you know, doesn't do foursomes, you know. And he points, he gestures to your other three people. It's a sort of like Trust me, something. I wouldn't share with these guys anyways. Are, th are they your sort of like, uh, are those your like your bodyguards and things? Pretty much. Uh, I got two bodyguards and um, one guy who, who uh, carries my dainty purse. All oh, right. He says, one, one of those guys looks like he's in his gym jams. I'm not too sure what he's wearing. <laughs> looks. Uh, yeah, I, he's, I carry his dainty purse. <laughs> oh, you're, dainty you're purse. the dainty you purse carrier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> and you strike absolute fear into their hearts. He says, I'll tell you what. You and he says, <laughs> the, the, the captain leans, leans forward to your side and says, I'll tell you what. Let's put a bet on whether that tin can man will float if we throw him into the pier. <laughs> you talk, you're, you're talking about... Um, uh, which one are you talking about? The one in the armour. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hengis. Uh, no, I, I really actually don't think he can float. <laughs> no, we don't either. And everybody guffaws <laughs> with, with laughter. It'll be. I laugh with. I laugh with him even, even fakely. He said it'll be uh, funny watching him flail around as he goes under. No, no, no. Speaking of sinking, what's going on with uh, that ship right there? Is it all right? You guys are kind of waiting for repairs, or is yeah, it ready to go? You're sort of like um, enjoying in the sarcasm and sort of like joining in the the um, snide remarks as you're with your friends, and they started to almost like uh, accept you and um, having a laugh at you. And one of them says, you might have a daily purse, but you, you're you fun to be with, Mr. Jim. Just Jim. <laughs> Just Jim, yep. No, no, I like you guys too. And the I like captain. Your, uh, like your grubbiness. It's yeah, nice. and, and one of the sailors says, well, he, he says, that ship's a bit like a drunkard on, a, on his final night with his lady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's now being kept up in that place, I do. And the, um, the, the captain goes, Oi, shut up! And he says, these might be these might be passengers. Well, I'm only saying, I mean, we're going to have to bail out a lot of water and all the, all the wasteful 
um, the missing cargo that we've had and also everything that has been spoiled. I mean, we need to have um, cr we need to have somebody to take somewhere. And the captain. Honestly, we're we're looking. We are looking for some transport, but you know, we don't really want to. We don't really want to keep it on the books, if that makes sense. Well, he says you you'll probably have to um, come and have a look and and see. The ship ain't going anywhere. I mean, she's. I mean, it's quite ironic that it's called the floating flotsam, and it doesn't look like she'll be floating for much longer. Well, let's uh, let's check it out. See, uh, see if maybe it's something we might want to invest in. Yeah, wh that, why are, are you somebody who who knows about boats then? Um, not really know about boats, but I know about money. I know money helps repair boats. Well, maybe we, if we show you, maybe you can see whether or not you can fix it. And he sort of like um, gets up and he sort of like gestures to to you to. Um, follow him on the pier and he says are your friends coming as well or not absolutely bodyguards right <laughs> yeah I, 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 th I throw my purse um, to uh, Mr. Pitt uh, to uh, um, Bartleby 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 <laughs> with his messed up hands yeah Ma yes. Bartleby <laughs> roll, roll your athletics score I would love to <laughs> Yeah, you sort of like it, yeah. it's that moment that um, Captain uh, that can, Cyrus. Can I, goes, can I? Sorry, can I make an athletics roll to try and snatch it out of the air as it's going towards Bartleby? Um, yeah, but it's going to be quite formidable to do that. I, I will have a go. I will reach up my hand and fail miserably. Um. No, I, I got a fifth one out. Well, you, you Bartleby. I'll tell you what I would like to do, just for for a bit of style and panache. I'd like just a point of look. <laughs> Wow! To catch a pound! <laughs> just his purse as it goes past his head. It'd be like, Shh. Yeah, it's very a, impressive. So, so Bartaby, Bartaby, you're all ready to catch this um, purse, and it's this pouch that's coming towards you, and you're all prepared, like you're always told, and sort of like your hands cupped, ready to sort of like make it go straight in. But it never actually gets to you. You you feel a bit cheated as, you know, because you were going to catch this. And all of a sudden, um, Hasra, one-handed, his other hand on his spear, sort of like reach out and, and grabs it using a point of luck um, to, to grab it. And um, still but, but Bartleby, you're sort of like, goodness. Bartleby, you sort of think, <laughs> I had that. I had that. I, I know deep down, um, and Anne Rail probably reminds me, I didn't. <laughs> and as you, you all sort of like go onto the um, pier, and as you all sort of like file onto the pier, the, the sailors watch you um, as you um, walk along what appears to be quite wet and slippery planks. And one of them has a, uh, a jive at you, um, Hengers, and says, Don't slip. Don't slip, he says, because we're not coming in to pull you out. And everyone says, well, you couldn't pull him out even if you tried. And they sort of like slap each other. And you walk onto the pier that doesn't look the best quality of pier. It's obviously that boats closer to the entrance of the gate. That's where the main boats, the high end boats and this one is all, almost like all by itself listing slightly and you all notice that when you actually stand on it that the boat almost like rocks quite markedly you know it's more so than what you would um, expect and um, the captain looks at you all and he says oh he says the problems down below and he takes you um, over to like a small um, hatch and he opens the hatch and there's like a, a set of ladders um, going down um, into the um, almost like into the darkness of the inners of the ship. And you can tell that this is definitely a cargo ship. It has a quite large opening in the middle that is actually covered over at the moment but you can imagine that that would the cover would be the tarpaulin would be removed and things would be lifted up 
out of the uh, middle of the boat. Um, but this is just sort of like a, a narrow hatchway um, near some stairs and it's almost like in the crew quarters end. And he sort of like picks up a lantern that seems to be hanging by the entrance and there's a, a tinder and flint there and he clicks it um, on and it, it's a covered lantern almost like a bull uh, bullseye lantern so it's covered all the way but then it has like an opening that almost like acts as a um, torch and he quite deftly um, clambers onto the ladder um, holding this with his off hand and actually descends down um, carrying this lantern in one hand and then just almost like stepping, almost like losing grip, but then gripping the, the ladder at the, the right moment. And this is about um, three metres, four metres down into the, cab, into the cargo hold. And as he sort of like gets down to the bottom, he says, come down when you're ready. All right. Um... I'll go down first because I have my glaive, which I can, you know, turn on on fire and not coolness and all that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go climb down first. Are you, Are you sure, Master Cyrus? Would you not like myself to go down first, being your 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 protector and bodyguard? Jim. Um, uh, yeah, Jim. he says. Jim. <laughs> the captain yeah, so says. Jim. Cyrus, Jim. I thought your name was just Jim. He's he's oh, a it's, it's a nickname. <laughs> Cyrus is a nickname. Why didn't you yes. tell me your nickname, just Jim? Yeah. Not, I thought because I didn't know how friendly we're gonna be. I he said I thought you. we were friends. You know what? I think we are now. You can go ahead and call me Cyrus if you want. Right. Thank you. What's your? What should I call you? He says Captain. All right, Captain. <laughs> Um, any kind of marsupial name you want to put at the end of that, or no? Or okay, Joey, um, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> Captain Joey, Captain Joey. Um, it's either that or Captain B um, Duckpeel Platypus. You, you know, <laughs> it's better than better than Sergeant Wombat. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, you go ahead and. So uh, you're you're doing the one-handed down. I oh, indeed. Uh, yeah. So. Um, all you need to do, by the way, is um, each of you to descend the ladder, uh, which take an athletics roll. If you are carrying every, anything in your offhand or carrying everything, anything that might impede your descent, um, i.e. big weapons, then um, it would be a hard roll. Just to let you know, you will not take any damage um, from the fall. It's just how eloquent and how... Uh, uh, yeah, and how perfect you you want to um be if you wish to take um minutes over climbing down then you mm -hmm. can do which will take mm -hmm. your role to easy but it will also make you look like a complete and utter wuss <laughs> so yeah. i was just going to uh, take stock of what's there and go down he's done this many a time before cool and he knows what he's doing yeah, so you sort of like um, make your way down and um, no problem at all as you probably not familiar about going down into the cargo holds of ships that many times, but probably scaling ladders to, you know, go up into a, a storage area in a tree or something when you're out there and you quite happily um, get down. And the first thing that you notice, Hasra, when you drop to the ground is that you suddenly, you're doing this quite, I imagine you're doing it quite um, stylishly. And, you know, at the last couple of rungs, you instead of just sort of like carrying on stepping down, you sort of like push yourself off slightly. Just and, quite spin and prepare. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Just well, stand there. Probably no spinning, really? but you, you sort of, like, and the first thing you notice, and you didn't hear it before because the captain stepped off into it, and you sort of like push yourself and land. And the first thing you hear is splash. And yeah. as you look down and you suddenly see what you thought was the um, bottom of the boat is actually not. It's you're about knee deep in water. It's a lovely inky blackness of yeah. the water. Yes. And he sort of like, and the captain says, just 
Be careful you don't get wet. Who's coming uh, down next? Ha, 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 ha. Very funny, Captain. Who's coming down next? Um, <laughs> Hengus is just looking at this and like, no, I'm like, you guard up at the top. Hengus is oiling his armour before he's oiling <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, no. It's covered in oil rags already. Yeah. He's got just got a, he's got an overcoat that is just kept inside in oil that he just he's got a, a full body has, has, hazard suit. Waste. <laughs> Who's coming down next? Um, I want to see if I can just pass down my glaive to uh, to Hengus or um, um Hazra. <laughs> I... Sorry, Hazra. Uh, Hengus, Hazra. Yeah, you um, could. I'm gonna roll. Not. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try and do this instead. Instead of rolling athletics, I'm gonna roll an acrobatics. Make this. Badass. Oh yes, I I will I will accept an acrobatics roll. Oh. Ooh, let's see what happens here. This is when we need a fumble. This will really make my night. Jump. Oh, the tension. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You've got luck points. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna do it because I, I want to look badass. I'm using my luck point, reversing that. Okay then. So that's two you. Is that two you've used? Or yeah. three? No, two. Okay then. So you, um, you luckily you you feel yourself slipping at one point, but luckily um, you manage to grab hold of the ladder um, one more time and sort of like um, you you go down and you're you're quite you see the water you don't push off or anything like that um but you you do safely make it down and the captain sort of like says not bad for a dainty lad what can i say as you will hand his glaive over to him all right yeah and you're sort of like um down there now with, with your weapons out um who's going down next I'm a little nervous now, Angus. Now that I've seen them go down, and it's it's pretty far down there, and Amriel will protect me, and Barlby's going to go forward, uh, looking at his horribly scarred hands. Um, he doesn't have anything bulky on him. Um, Are you going down slowly? N no, I'm not taking minutes. Uh, okay. Barlby knows he's probably going to get injured in this process, but he's trusting in Amriel. So that's a normal standard athletics well. I feel a look uh, point coming on. I feel a look point coming on. I got that's the same role as before. I know they're using uh, the same program. <laughs> <laughs> they're using the same program. I'm getting worried. Yay. I'll, I'll go ahead and use a, a point of Amriel um, or luck to. Um, okay then. So bring me guidance and, and focus while I'm going. I guess down. we'll look cool. We don't want to look stupid. We want to look cool. And you, I don't care person. if I look stupid. I just don't want to like slip and fall and break my. So you use a point of luck. That's what he's worried um, about. Hazra yeah. and and um, Cyrus and the captain are looking up, and you you almost there's a bit like that. Oh, and then oh, no, uh, as you see Bartleby falter for a moment, but then mm -hmm. grab his. Um, regain his footing and lands um, quite not the perfectly glow but, around his and the first thing that you notice that the water sort of like sinks in, seeps into your boots uh, and everything and uh, you know you suddenly lift your bag of candles can i have four candles please <laughs> Candles <laughs> for forks. <laughs> now, now, Captain and Bartleby, you will not know what we're laughing at. Now. So the the two Ronnies was a sketch, and the sketch is that one of them goes into like a hardware store, and he says, "Can I have four candles?" And the guy brings out four candles. Oh, and he puts. You it, sent this to me before, yeah. actually. And the guy <laughs> looks down. Mad. He says. He it's says, no, he, he says, four <laughs> candles, andles for forks. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sketch's like 10 minutes long. He's got uh, all this stuff in there. With it like, you know, it oh. is a classic um, sketch. Yeah, it, it's so funny. It's good. It's, okay, it's then. With a dead parrot. Now, uh, yeah, <laughs> this parrot That's is That's a different dead. company. <laughs> this parrot is oh, dead. Okay, then. Oh, so, we're not going to put this off any longer, Hengist. <laughs> Hengist is going to go down normally. 
Um, he will be careful, but he won't be taking minutes. Okay, then. So it's... I think he's going to make a whole athletics well. Oh! <laughs> Oh my <laughs> you forget, Hengus has been on ships many times. <laughs> He's on like... He spent months on the wave crest. Uh, no H- gym. H- H- Hengus <laughs> doesn't even falter when he goes down. He doesn't even need to use any luck at Just, all, Cyrus I and Bartimae. <laughs> I have this vision of Hengi stepping on the first rung and the whole rope <laughs> stretching to the I, floor. I, I had <laughs> visions of him falling over backwards in his armour. <laughs> just <laughs> accepting <laughs> fate. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's above <laughs> as he goes down slowly. <laughs> uh, but no, 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 you'd be surprised. Uh, everybody sort of like, uh, everybody, uh, as Hengi tries to um, start to go down in his um, armour, you, you hear the um, captain go, like that. and then he just sort of like comes down totally not there's no stagger there's no nearly slip but grabbed on by a point of luck he comes down very um deftly uh, indeed and sort God of God. like the the um captain turns around to you and he says he says have you been on ship before um, a few ha- times uh, well your famed warrior oh god <gasps> You know, he says, I thought I knew you, but no. I thought I knew your nose, but no. No, it's gone. And he sort of like says, this way, gang. And you're sort of like wading through the water. And every now and again, you sort of like move your foot or you stump your toe over something that's submerged. And the captain sort of like looks at you and says, watch out for that. You know, after you've hit it. And you sort of like (laughs) carry on and going. And then... You come to this um, area um, that you can see that there's various crates floating around that is obviously full of something that is now spoilt or can't be used. But as you get more and more sort of out to sea, if that makes sense, away from the pier, you suddenly notice that there's um, the cargo seems to be less packed in here in matter of fact there seems to be hardly anything in this area and you can suddenly notice that by um there's a some kind of lapping sound and you notice that in the side of the boat um there seems to be um a hole that the crew have sort of like patched up with what appears to be a some hide or something like that you can see that it's stretched over this hole and this hole is a good one and a half two meters wide and you can see that they've stretched animal hide or something like that and hammered it into the um the hull of the boat but obviously it's not watertight at all and it's let the water in and this is what's causing the boat to lean that way and the um, captain sort of like holds, holds the lantern up and points at it and he says, that's our problem, just Jim. Oh, s- sorry, Mr. S- uh, Cyrus. Now that we are mates. And he puts <laughs> his fist out like that for... And, he goes, and I, I, I grab it. And he, he goes, <laughs> no! <laughs> he, he says, no! <laughs> oh. I don't want to hold your dainty hand. <laughs> oh, land lovers. Uh, no idea. Soft purse. And you notice um, he sort soft. of like brings his hand back and he sort of like he sort of like reaches down in the water and gives it a little <laughs> a, a bit of a wave in the water and sort of like yeah. flicks it off. He um, says He says, If you tell you my crew something? if you what, tell what? my crew that you did that <laughs> You sort of, guys hit something? What happened to that hole? Well, he says, we we don't know. He's, well, he says, so we arrived mm-hmm. and we disembarked and it was late at night. So we just thought we'll wait until the next morning. We managed to get into Lindo, which was absolutely fine. But then when we came back the next morning, we noticed that the floating flotsam wasn't floating much at all. And when hmm. we came down here, 
it looked like a, a massive hole had been created and well to be honest with you i'm not a any ship maker i'm not a shipwright at all he says but i tell you i know because of all the wood that was in the inside that we were broken into from the outside is uh, there such a thing that can do that like a some sort of i don't know it could be a rock or you know heaven forbid uh like some sort of beast he says in harbor a rock in armor. Uh -huh. I don't think Lindo uh, has. As you also whispered to um, to to Jim, let's see. Uh, perhaps did they stop at an island and pick something up they were not supposed to? Uh, are you whispering this to? I'm whispering. Yes. Yeah. So don't you use a um, a point of um, awesomeness and do a conceal. Uh, uh, con conceal your words. <laughs> conceal my words. Self. <laughs> I, th okay. <laughs> I I think what we can um, probably do is that um, Cyrus... I, nomadic survival combat skill. Cyrus, you yeah. you can roll. Okay, Hazra, how quiet do you want to whisper it? I want to be like this. I want to talk with the wind. Okay, then. So are you talking... A hard difficulty level to hear you, or formidable level. Hard, hard. hard I think. Okay, so, we're so very close to each other. Okay, so, so yeah. um, loud. Cyrus, I am trusting you now that if you fail in this next roll, then you 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 are aware that ha Hasra has whispered you something, but you don't know what it is. Okay, so yeah. you're not likely to use that information. So what what, what am I rolling? Well, I, I tell rolling? you what we're rolling because I'm rolling it as well. So um, you're going to roll your perception, okay? And it needs to be hard, but the captain is rolling his perception as well, and he mm. has to make um, a hard because Hasra is saying it to a difficulty of hard, you know. Right. So this it could be a whole game in itself, couldn't it? Chinese it could, yeah. whispers. <laughs> okay then. So um, yeah. So um, roll your um, perception. <laughs> no, I... what? Okay, are you well, saying? What? You're not using a point to look, are you? Oh, Papa! <laughs> oh, Papa! <laughs> okay, here's my will. Um, I'll do uh, this because his skill is fifty-six percent. It's good perception. Oh, hang on, it's not working. Not working. 42. Oh. Mm. Um, so hard is what? Um, a third a third off, isn't it? Is that right? So it, it, I don't think it'll make the hard point. It's a third of 56. A third of 56. Oh. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. I'm actually... Do you know what I've got? How sad is this? I've actually got a sheet that has all the dice rolls in. And then, how, how uh, many sheets do you have? I have loads of sheets. I tell you. Not, not just one sheet. Right, dice rolls. Here we go. Um, so his skill oh. is fifty-six. Fifty-six. Da, 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 boom. Um, so easy. That's um, hard. Um, yeah, thirty-seven. He would have to get. So oh. Um, oh. he he doesn't he doesn't hear a anything um, at all. Just looks like has a sort of like move towards you, maybe give you a peck on the cheek or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, then moved away and no, uh, no, I don't need my purse right now. Uh, yeah, um... and he, he sort of <laughs> like, and well, you you suddenly hear from um, behind you, um, mm -hmm. and you you turn around to look quite naturally, and you notice that one of the um, sailors, um, mm -hmm. their head. Is poked down the um, the cargo hold, and he sort of like shouts um, across where he can see the light, and shouts at the captain, "Don't don't forget to tell them about the sea devils." And he sort of like you see the captain's face drop, and he says, "Well, they're <laughs> bound to want to have passage on our ship now that you've mentioned sea devils." 
you blundering idiot. Well, I just thought it would be good for them to know. Well, you know what that... What, oh, well, just go away. And he says, no run for him tonight. I uh, turn to look back at the captain. Sea devils? Look, Wait. look. It's only a rumour. I heard this rumour. It said you got right. a broken heart. Sorry. I heard a room Banana Rama. If anybody mm. knows who Banana Rama is. And he sort of like says, Look, so when we were coming here, he says we passed this island and the sailors kept saying that we were being followed, etc. And they're sure that we came into the um, harbour and with shall we say well, something attached to our hull that were not barnacles. Anyway, the, the sailors mm -hmm. think that the boat is, the ship is cursed, and that there's sea devils coming and raiding us. But I tell you, they haven't been back. They, If there were somebody, and it could be pirates for all I know, you know, once we sealed that hull, they didn't come back again. Nothing else has gone missing since we healed, um, sealed this hull up. So is it possible, and I'm just, I'm just playing around with this idea, um, is it possible that these sea devils decided to hitch a ride with you, broke a, a, a hole, or broke a, a hole in your hull, um, and then, you know, essentially hitched a ride all the way back here? Well, I, I don't think there was a hole in our ship as we arrived here. All right, otherwise, so they broke in afterwards. Why would they break in? Well, we had some, well, shall we say some food on board. Just sort of oh. like dried meats. I can't imagine them dry anymore. But anyway, something. And, well, okay. Okay. Uh, I'll own up to you, Cyrus. I'll own up to you because we're mates, aren't we? Right, Jelly. And, well, he says, we found something on the island. It looked like some kind of statue. Small like. Wasn't big at all. It was quite small. And we thought there might be some profit in it. So we, we grabbed it. All right, and where is the statue now? Gone. You seem to. I'm just again. He neither here nor there, but the statue seemed to disappear after this random hole showed up in your. Well, along hole. with all the other crates to do with food and stuff. But more importantly, that mysterious statue you found on an island, and then when. You left the island. You saw uh, your sailors seem to see sea devils follow you, and then all of a sudden, when you park your ship, a hole shows up, and the and the statue is stolen. You don't see if there's any connection there. He thinks for a while and goes, <laughs> "No." Oh, okay, that's that's good. So, so is my friend. Can I just mm -hmm. ask? Was the statue stolen, or did this 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 man maybe sell the statue? Why do you think I'd still be in port if I sold the statue? It looked like it was well. To me, it looked like it was gold, but it might just have been shiny yellow metal. Can you describe the statue a little more so that maybe if uh, maybe someone sees it, maybe we'll uh, we can return it back to you? Well, okay then. I'm only telling you just, Jim, Cyrus, because we're mates, yeah? I don't, Almost the best of. I don't want any of this getting back to the author port authorities. You understand what I'm saying here? Hey, well, I won't be talking to you if I want to talk to the port yeah. authorities, right? I know people, so just be warned. I know people, and it'll take more than Tin Can Alley over there to protect you with these people, I tell you. Angus just right. sniffs. Right, look. It was about so high and it was almost like a head and it was sort of like quite grotesque and ugly 
as if somebody was screaming and it seemed to have bits of gill holes on the side and i think i think the eyes might have been rubies oh they were definitely okay. red and gem like to be honest All with right. you i wish i'd taken it off the night before but obviously we didn't huh do you think we're in now, trouble we've been you know kind of searching around and all these different ships to find a, a ship that kind of fits what we're looking for for our journey but we also have been hearing these rumors of uh sea devils well says, why would do you think why would they stick around if they hypothetically got their statue back do you think the statue belonged to them well i'm just i'm just throwing random questions out there but maybe we can uh, continue on this exercise but yeah let's see the statue belong to them and that's why they wanted it right why do you think they would like, why would they think they would would stick around if they already got their statue back no so you don't me. well joey we uh we need to go get something to eat but I want to thank you for your time. We're going to consider maybe we can even talk to somebody about repairing this uh, hole. Oh, are, um, you, are you paying for it then? Um, let me let me think about it uh, because we need to see what kind of investment we can do because it's going to take a lot of work to fix a hole while the ship's still in water because we need also need to get all the water out. It's, it's going to be a whole thing, but I'll, I'll stay in touch, all right, Joey? Yeah, well, he's a, yeah. Um, I'll look you up then. All right, remember, just ask around for Jim. Um, but yeah, I'm not allowed to use Cyrus, aren't I? No, remember, that's between buds. Right. And he sort of like looks at the other people and says, Are they your buds as well? Uh, no, they're hired bodyguards. Hi mm. yeah. Remember, even, I'm an important guy. Investments, even the, right? <laughs> even the guy with the wonky hands. Is he your bodyguard? Um,. Can't imagine he's more, of a, he's more of a pity hire. Yeah. Uh, Can't imagine him actually guarding anything, really. He's a, he's my nephew, so. Oh. It's it's a whole thing. I we'll see. It's a family business then. Um, family hire. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Um, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. James. <laughs> That's not close to Jim at all. <laughs> I look at Bartleby, obviously trying to insinuate that his name's James. I I have a Bartleby. question that Bartleby would have. Uh, Bartleby, just regard... just roll an oh, insight well for for me first. Absolutely. Insight. Oh! oh! That's Damn. where I get a critical. <laughs> you sort of like, you sort of like, um, get what um, Cyrus is saying and sort of like, you sort of like play along with it, uh, called James. Yeah. I have, you... I have a question really quick. The, the hole whom? in the ship. Oh, um, yeah. Roughly, you said it's a, it's like one or two meters. Um, I was looking at the miracles and, and prayers I can call on. I was thinking of this. How many times would I need to cast repair to essentially make it so it stopped leaking water? Not necessarily to make it so it's completely fixed. Like it, I, I imagine the hide has like one or two uh, points still leaking, or maybe may many more than that. I was just curious right. how much I could do. Well, what we can um, look at, Especially when people are mocking my use to the group. So, um, ba, 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 ba. a one d three hit points isn't a lot, which is no. Didn't you use this last time? We're so, um, I think maybe um, there things like um, there's hit points for um, siege weapons. Okay, then so. It's probably the same sort of size of like a scorpion um, catapult or ballista, which generally means that it's got about 15 hit points. 
So you would have to heal. You would have to repair 15 hit points for this hull. And that's taking into account that some of it is actually under the water as well. So you could probably okay. do it, but it's going to take quite a bit of... Magic points. Uh, yeah. Um, ha having been insulted, Amriel wants... Or not Amriel. Barleby wants to share his, his uh, Amriel and, and not really... I, I get how many points it needs, so this is more of a demonstration of looking for maybe an obvious little uh, yeah. seep in the... And everything. Um, here would be my folk magic roll. <laughs> do you know that critical you that you got for your insight? It would have been really good to have it now. Just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. This. You use it, don't you? Use I guess uh, Barleby is just going to look a fool. He's going to go over and pat it and mumble to himself. But well, I guess, you uh, can take yeah. minutes if you wish. Yeah, I'll, I'll take minutes over there then, if, if I'm allowed to. After yeah, so you sort of like um, take minutes and the captain sees that you've mended a little bit and he sort of like says, how much for the rest of it? 4,000 silver. No, just sorry. Legendary. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember, how much How much did he win? <laughs> um, 20, 22 silver pieces. Um... How about this? We'll make it a good even. Let's do 25 silver pieces. I think we can maybe fix the ship here. Just, just roll a 1d3. I just want to know how much of the... <laughs> so there's 14 points still t to do. He says, I'll give you 20 silver pieces if you can mend it. All right. That's a deal. This is a bargain price. Bargain so price. Yes, yeah, a bargain oh. price. A bargain. Hey, actually, wait, wait. I do didn't, I have? I didn't think about books. Um, I could actually do my commerce skill in this case. Can I try my commerce skill before I agree? Um, you can. Are, are you trying to haggle your way th through this? Um, well, since I'm not doing anything and all Bartleby's doing it, um, I don't know. I think I, I, the I, captain... I try to see if what Bar. I want to see what Barbie's look at me would be. I I think he... um, the captain is probably said to Bartleby because he's just repaired a bit of it. So it's like saying, "Will you? Do, would you um, repair the whole hole?" Um, James. Well, it appears that. Amriel's gaze has not been able to fully fix the hole here. A donation to the church uh, would easily get get uh, some fine fine priests down here to, to finish this job. It would only cost um, well, I'm not actually quite sure, but donations to the church can certainly get you a better deal than, than some craftsmen. Okay, so he sort of like um, mutters um, etc and sort of like um, talks about, you know, he doesn't really want a moon goddess healing his boat when there's um, gods and goddesses of the ocean. Um, but, um, Bartleby, can you just make a perception roll for me? Doubtful. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay, then. Yes, you can today. And you sort of like... Struggle with magic, uh, but... <laughs> you all sort of like um, move... Um, off the boat i'm not going to get you to roll your athletics rolls to go up the ladder again and you sort of like go off and you sort of like get to the end of the pier and you um hengis you're desperate in need of oil you know to clean from the company yeah uh, yeah he, he, and he's, he's very aware his legs are slowly rusting up rusting underneath yeah. him and especially since it's salt water as yeah. well i mean that's mm. not good at all um, uh, Hazra's armor is a bit like capillary action, so uh, even like though his fashion. knees was a bit, it's slowly the damp patch is slowly. Do you, do you know when you when you put your your quilt into a, a wash machine and then pull it out? I can't say That's I've me. ever done that, <laughs> but but yeah, you know it's sort of like you you all a bit a bit a bit damp, and you sort of like start heading away and two things um, happen um, very um, close together and 
one of the sailors, one of the officers um, comes running up to the party and you notice that he sort of like seems to be looking over at, at the, the crew, um, the officers who seem to be um, um, laughing and joking. And he sort of like um, hands out a, like a, an empty bottle or something. And he sort of like says, pretend to take this. To who? Just to you all in general. He just sort of goes, pretend to take this. All right, I'm I'm gonna pretend then. Pretend like I'm taking a sip. Yeah, well, you just sort of like take the um bottle and you hear a faint. Oh, okay. You hear a faint. Tick, tick. No, you don't. <laughs> 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 and a slight smell of chloroform. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> and he he sort of like um hands in you. Pretend to take a drink. There's nothing in the bottle, and he mm -hmm. sort of like laughs, and uh, you sort of like um almost like laugh along um, with him. Um, okay. And I see, do you know what I was just... Oh, acting is in, is in professional skills. That's a shame. That might have been a wonderful... T anyway, you sort of like laugh around and he says, he sort of like talks in hushed tones to you and every now and again he laughs again. He says, I saw them. He says, from the edge of the boat. Ha ha! <laughs> He's so funny. Uh, yeah, and he says, "I saw them underwater swimming away, round the headland," and he points to um, this headland here. Oh. Okay. He says, "Just swimming away." I saw them from the deck. I was on watch, and they were swimming round, keeping close to the land, and I just saw them disappear round this. Heading, um, sort of like this, round this side, and he sort of like laughs um, again, and um, then so it says, "Be careful, be careful," he he says um, to you, um, and then sort of like um, slaps you on the back or whatever, and um, runs um, off, and and Bartaby, it's at that time that. Something that you um, heard be while you're on the boat, you didn't hear it, and you didn't see it. So you heard it, and when you were right up close to the um, the hide to to mend it, and um, because you were so close there, you actually heard what. Uh, appear to be almost like uh, a muttering um, as if somebody was talking underwater but in a, in a in a language that you weren't familiar with um, at all and just because you got uh, 20 35 out of 36 there definitely seem to be two voices gurgling it was almost like, you know, when you put your head underwater and you try to talk, it was almost like that. A very harsh language, a very pointed language, um, a bit like Klingon, um, you know, very hakta, you know, and things like that. And it was almost like subdued by the water, muted by the water. And it's only when you get to this point and he says something about them swimming away that it actually... It, it, triggers that memory and you sort of like think beforehand you might have thought it was just some background noise but that sort of like makes you think oh hang on a minute maybe it was a language and not just some oceanic noises i see um we're on the ship, or are we leaving the ship at this point? No, the um, sailor probably caught up with you just past that um, second pier there. He really, obviously, wanted to just to talk to you guys about it and obviously didn't want to be ridiculed or um, made fun of or anything like that. Okay. Okay, so he heard this in the water over here. All right. 
Are you? Are you? I, are you? Um, we, we. I didn't hear. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just making sure I know. Um, I, I think Barleby would share that once the boy ran back to yeah. the group. It would, okay. He'd note. I, I thought there were like two leaks that were gurgling in there, but it might might have been a sea devils. Hmm. So what do you boys think? Should we uh, maybe hire a boat and kind of swim uh, to the side of this rock face? Not swim, but, uh, you know, take the boat to the other side of this rock face or should we climb around or something? I, I you know, I, it's the only clue we have of where these devils might be. You don't think that they would uh, climb up the rock face walls and go into the upper class district, would they? This, um, your, um, Bartaby, you've, um, lived in Linda for the majority of your life. And these, these are sheer, seriously, um, sheer drops, um, into yeah. the ocean. It makes, Linda was actually based here because of that, because actual access up from the cliffs around Linda is virtually, um, impossible. Mm-hmm. So even like something that had superior strength to a human and maybe claws that can grip a little bit better, it would still probably have a hard time climbing that sheer surface. It probably have. It won't be impossible, but it wouldn't be um, easy for it. Plus, if it failed, I would, I would feel that if the devils say we're in the upper district, we probably hear some something about that. So far, every time we've heard something about the devils, it's always around the docks. So yeah. my suggestion is they probably attack the docks and head back to maybe, I don't know, maybe it's like a cave or something over there or something underwater that they're um, hiding under. But I I'm think... Not, I'm not a good swimmer, to be honest. I, I don't know. I'm not a swimmer. I'm a, I don't like to get my stuff wet. You'll probably but be... But if we take a boat, maybe we might see something that we can, uh, you know, find it easier to get to. That is a good idea. I, I think that might be our best choice of action to see if they have a hideout of some sort because they're, exactly. they're going somewhere and we can't just search underwater. I'm to... not swimming. Yeah, if they have a cave of some sort where they're storing food or prisoners. They're trying to take that lady as a prisoner, so they must have some place that they're going. I remember that. They have to, and they're obviously going to be constantly um, attacking the dock areas and Honestly, we kind of uh, we kind of need a win right now in order to get the Baron's favor, and I think this might be a good one, good way to win. Um, so uh, a boat um, with uh, somebody to steer it. Um, yeah, no, we don't know what we're doing on a boat. Yeah, it'll probably cost you. Uh, it's not a long way, so it could probably cost you about fifteen silver pieces. You mm. know, and they would. Um, row you to where you would like to go um yes yeah, yeah. it's it's a small craft um you can all be um seated in it that's not a problem it probably has a couple of rowers and the person at the tiller um so they're quite happy to sort of like take you where you would like to go that's not mm -hmm. a, not an off op, not a problem so is, is that the plan therefore honestly i have no other plan you guys have any ideas I think it's, it's Jim, my friend. You are you are doing an amazing job so far. So, I'm leaving my whole life in your hands. And Cyrus, it's just us now. You can call me Cyrus again. Uh, Cyrus is quite I, I, used I to taking control. I want to make it again, Jim. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, then. So you sort of like um, by the end of by the probably start of the early afternoon after you've had some. Um, food etc you actually find somebody who will actually um, take you round the, the headland there and they they probably think you're on some kind of sightseeing tour or, mm -hmm. or something like that or you want to look at the um, you know Hengist might want to look at what the state of the walls on the um, upper section are like at this side yeah, we, we don't want to insinuate this is a dangerous uh, trip because we don't want to pay too much. Yeah, and they sort of like, they, they row you around and the um, the um, pilot sort of like says, so do you want to see Dead Man's Cove then? 
Yeah. Why is it called Dead Man's Cove? Well, the long... Um, Bartleby, roll your law history. I was just about to say, I want to verify this. And this can you... Um, <laughs> Oh, that that's fine. another identical number to the one prior. Nice. Wow. We're, 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 we broke the system real twenty. There, there is there is a. The I think there's a third time this. this it's a conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's we're third time. we will just change all. We will, I tell you what, let's reverse all roles from now on. That seems <laughs> to be. Uh, <laughs> I'm really happy with that. Um, mm. So, Bartleby, you know that um, around the corner there there is. Um, a cave that was um, supposed to be known as Dead Man's Cove. Um, it's like the little inlet of light in the land, and there's meant to be um, a cave at the end of it. It's quite um, sort of like folklorish, and people sort of like say that a number of people have died there. Um, they're haunted. It's not a place that people come to now because probably. Only the tourists look at it from a distance to the cave entrance. And the, the reason it was called um, Dead Man's Cove, um, because there was a rumour that um, a, a sailor, a sailor was actually um, trialled um, for killing another crew member. And the, the story goes that rather than um, killing him, he was um, bound and gagged inside the cave, which is quite tidal um, at times. And he was sort of like staked to the ground and then allowed the ship, um, the ocean naturally came in. And because he was tied to the stake, he actually drowned um, in it. And the interesting thing is that the story goes, and of course it's, it, you know, this one probably only a rumor, is that, um, that neither him or the stake were, were ever found and the story goes that he's dead man's cove is where he haunts and searches for victims and that at certain stormy weather nights sailors say they can hear the sound um, of his wailing coming from dead man's cove I, I mean nobody's going to really believe that but the the, the guy sort of like um says it in a really nice way and you part of me you remember it and he sort of like says so when when it's late at night and you hear and the nobles hear a faint howling or cry or moaning it's probably the man who died in dead man's cove and you sort of like brought um round the corner and they sort of like um take you um on a, a pathway that actually almost like comes like that and just here is where the the cave is and he's sort of like they they're sort of like um sort of like rowing it round as as you go and yeah you're sort of like all keeping a, a lookout and you notice that the um as you pass by it the the tide's out at the moment and so you can see that there's there's about this much uh, you know maybe about 50 centimeters um, 20 30 centimeters deep of water that sort of like is flowing into the cave at the moment so you can you can see uh, the base of it so if you imagine the the actual walkway to walk in goes under the the line of the tide and as the tide rises, it will probably flood um, the whole um, cave. And but at the moment, it's just at low tide, so it's just sort of like you know, going in. High tide's about um, it's about two o'clock now. Um, high tide's at seven o'clock tonight. And you sort of like um, roll past it, and he sort of like regales his um, um, story. Um, everybody, make a perception check. <laughs> well, can I just say that no, it wasn't 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, that would be a fail. Um, is anybody looking? Um, no. No? 
going to pass yeah. on luck. Okay. So um, you all sort of like um, go um, as you the boat sort of like curves round, and um, Hazra, you're you're the only person that actually made your perception roll, mm -hmm. and you 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 look into the darkness of the cave, and it's 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 afternoon sunshine uh, outside. Well, probably a bit overcast for this time of the year. But you definitely, without doubt, see what appears to be a set of red eyes um, shining out. And it's one of those things that you look and you turn around. And when you look again, um, it, it's gone. Um, um, with that, who's next to me? It'd be whoever you wish. Unless they don't want um. to be next to you. You could be next to Dainty Boy, if you wish. Or... No, 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 no. You're picking. It's uh, not uh, there's any judgment. Uh, Hengist. Hengist, my friend. I just saw some lights to, um, in the Hengist cave ahead. Hengist doesn't be sitting next to Medivac. <laughs> 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 I'm joking. <laughs> Say what? God, no. Uh, so he took the Hengist. Go, Hengist. I, I just see some, some, some eyes that were going red in the cave. And when I looked again, they were gone. Well, I didn't see them, but I know that your eyes are far better than mine, Hazra. Perhaps we should stop um, stop the boat and go and explore, because this is I, clearly I'm, where they're going to be. Yes, I'm more worried for you, because you're covered in this metal that you are, you are surrounded by. Well, we have a few hours until high tide. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. Let's make it fast then, guys. Let's just tell the others behind us. Oh, that I now I'll say it once I once they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and are you are you asking for the pilot to take you to the cave? And wait around, hopefully. Um, as quickly as possible. Heng Hengis will say that if he if he if he will take us to the cave and wait, there'll be more silver in it for him. He sort of like um, looks at his colleagues and says, you know, it'd be either double or triple um, rates for this. I'm that sure I'm, I'm sure we can come to an agreeable, agreeable sum. Sounds fair. He but if you do not wait for us after you agree this, I will find you. <laughs> have a unique <laughs> set of skills. Yes. This involves being on land. Skills. <laughs> okay. Come out of the city and I will find you. <laughs> so, um, so you, um, he sort of like uh, agrees to take you um, close to it, close enough to probably um, step um, into it. And as as you get close and they're sort of like maneuvering the boat in, all of a sudden you feel the boat rock as if almost as if something has come up underneath it and um it is almost like as as if something like a a fish a giant fish or something is bumping it they're not sort of like it's not constant pressure it looks as if feels as if somebody's pushing it in so could you all make um athletics roles um Cyrus, if you want to um, use acrobatics instead, or anybody with acrobatics, you can actually make that use that role if you wish. Be summoned. Yes, I'm so cool. <gasps> wow. I'm that a different kind of flavor. I made it. That's fine. Bartleby, that's the best. <laughs> I role panicked. Have in my... I panicked. I saw my perception score, and I thought that was my athletic role. Oh yes, <gasps> so did I. Oh no. Right. Okay. <laughs> So, oh my giddy aunt, everybody made, or oh, Bartleby. Bartleby got a perfect, <laughs> perfect, <laughs> perfect roll. Okay then, so the, um, the boat is actually almost like tipped and um, you, um, you have a choice, each of you, um, because you've made your roll. You can either stay in the boat or if you wish, and I won't be able to hear you until I've got this thing out my eyes and my headphones back on, so don't tell me. So you have a choice. You can either 
use your roll to step into the cave or use your roll to stay on the boat? I guess we'll use his roll to step into the cave. Ditto. Yeah. But uh, I want to do my sure. on the cool because I did so well on my acrobatics check. Can I flip onto the cave? Like, do like a cool flip. You said glaive to Well, yeah, to I was just, you, just you need to tell me where this glaive is if you're flipping. Um, <laughs> he's pushing his glaive down and he used to flip. Uh, like, a, like a high jump. Like, um, um, yeah, no? Um, yeah, I know what you're talking pole about. Uh, pole vault. Pole yeah. Vault. Yeah, pole vault. Yeah, pole vault. Pole yeah. Are you pole vaulting from the boat? Mm -hmm. So you, you're pushing your glaive into the yeah. So boat when I when I do a flip, the it. glaive is like it'll be uh, perpendicular to me, so it'll be in like center. So if you're doing a flip, the glaive's like outwards. And just goes after Cyrus, <laughs> making sure it's on the opposite side to where the blade is. <laughs> so he doesn't get decapitated. All about, it's all about looking badass, right? <laughs> Badass is is specifically what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I I think I think um, we need to be very clear about this glaive and what we can do with it and what we can't do because it is. No, it's, it, no, it's like monkey, isn't it? This magic long expanding pole. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, have this. Have this. Uh, I'll make it even better. Um, he was born. In an egg on a mountain. Top. I will, I will, I will throw the glaive in, in front, uh, you know, so it hits the ground in the cave, and um, do a flip onto the cave. Tempest! Stop! So you, you all managed to get from the boat um, into the um, yes. the cave using whatever means uh, necessary. Um, you, one thing that you notice is that I just need to roll one more side because it's for. Um, Okay, and you notice out of the four people on the boat, um, two of them stay on the boat with the tipping, um, but another two of the sailors actually fall overboard. And you sort of like manage to sort of like get um, into the entrance of the cave and the, the um, tiller and one of the oarsmen um, manage to stay on board. And the, the, you look round to the boat and you notice that um two of the two of the sailors are are in the water and they they seem to be able to swim that doesn't seem to be an issue and they they make their way to this the side of the boat and they sort of like um hold on to the side of the boat and they understand boating so they're not both going to try to get in at the same time um and one of them sort of like um the, the other two guys sort of like go to the opposite side of the boat to, to weigh out. And then what happens is that one of them sort of like um, starts to clamber in. And as one of them starts to clamber in and you four are now in the um, entrance of the cave, you turn round and you notice that all of a sudden um, somebody, the guy who was trying to get in not the one who's already over the the one who was just holding on to the side waiting for his friend to get in you suddenly notice that he gets pulled down and away from the the cave entrance um as if somebody's taken his legs and swam away and you you notice suddenly he's sort of like a like that in his arm because the boat rocks and you look around and you see him being pulled under and away um, yeah would anybody like to do anything no okay so uh, i mean oh, I, I, I don't really yeah there's not a whole lot of i'm options. trying to think what i can do I, I i don't know if i can shove him back up and i i i, I don't how so, far away is he from us right now? Well, like the the, the boat was um, the boat was sort of like almost like docked with the ca cave. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, now it's a little bit further away because there's been a hole. You've all jumped into it, so the force would have sent it the other way, and you um, you you almost like um, this guy gets pulled. He goes under, and the oarsman or something so like shouts out some kind of obscenities or um holy 
um, Amriel or something. And you notice that um, a little bit away from the boat, um, the the sailor, um, the oarsman bobs up again, um, gasping um, for air and, and coughing and spluttering. And he seems to be almost like trying to um, tread water. Um, but you all notice from your um, point in the cave and he, he must be about five, six meters um, past the edge of the boat now. And I, I should be like, to us, to us. And you, you sort of like, he's trying to sort of like tread water. And what you all notice is that round him, the sea is definitely um, changing color. And there's almost like scenes um, to be almost like an oil slick slowly coming up and um, covering round. And you, you see him frantically um, 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 try to thrash his legs about, but he doesn't seem to be doing anything. It doesn't seem to be um, um, holding him up uh, as well. And then he, he, he suddenly notices the, the change in water and he, he reaches down and this this look of sheer horror um, comes um, um, onto his face. And he, as you look out, the blood colored sort of like seeps out and he, he sort of like shouts out, they've eaten my legs. And just at that point, he goes Whoo! like that. And he gets pulled down. Um, again, thrashing like anything uh, as he goes underwater. And the, the other guy gets on the um, boat. And the boat's away from the actual um, cave now. And the, there's a whole load of blaspheming and swearing and everything. And um, you just see um, out at sea this almost like bloody stain. Um, slowly mm -hmm. rising up uh, onto the water and you notice um, the odd um, almost like mm -hmm. bit of cloth yeah uh, also it like that um, comes um, up and the um, the the oar and the boat and the tiller guy uh, one of them says let's get the hell out of here you know and you notice that the boat which is far away now starts to um, head off uh, do you wish to say? Does, does he get the back seat? We just need a bigger boat. No, yeah, that would be a good one. <laughs> um, um, is there anything that you would like to say or do? Um, I want to shout cowards to them. Uh, Astra is going to take a step back into the cave, away from this dark, bottomless depth. Yeah, so... Um, as you um, step into um, the the cave, um, you do uh, notice um, that there is some solid ground in here. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're not sort of like, um, you're sort of like not really ankle deep, not really knee deep, probably like mid calf um, deep. Um, mm -hmm. as you as you um, go into the um, cave and you you come in a little while um, a little way just um, as the natural light um, shows you I'm just sorry I've just got um, hangers to put on and then I'm ready to show you the um... all right hang on just one second right okay. there's hangers Where's Cyrus gone? Here's Cyrus. Right, okay then. Let me... Um... Um, make sure that my... I want to make sure that my um, dynamic lighting uh, is on. Uh, actually, I'll just do um, a fog of war at the moment because that'll be easier. Um, ba, ba, ba. So you're stood on what appears to be um, a, a small um, tunnel 
I'm going to move you across. You might not be able to. Can you see yourselves now? Yeah. Please, I see me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to quickly uh, make sure that you can move um, each other. Um, that's as far as your um, light. Oh, there's, there's Cyrus, look. <laughs> he was hiding behind my skirt. <laughs> I wondered so scared, where. Guys. Wonder where it was. Okay. Um. Can everybody um move their tokens? I can. I cannot. Yeah. Is this um bar to Yeah, be... I can. Can't move anyone else's though. Uh, bar to be fewers. There you cool. go. Let me just um drag um Ben on. So this is um, as far as your um, light shows you. Um, you can tell Hazra from um, up at the front where you are at the moment that um, it it obviously opens out into some kind um, of... Hazra's not here at the moment. All right. So um, whoever's um, out at the front, um, Cyrus, you could probably tell this. You can mm -hmm. see that sort of like um, here, it mm -hmm. obviously opens out into some kind of um, cave. Um, any color that is your color of where what's underneath your um, your legs at the moment is water. Um, mm -hmm. Can you see just there? Yeah. That's not water, that's um, a layer outside the water going over the top so you can step onto that to get out the water and if you see any um brown or coppery looking pieces then they're um on top as well okay at times the map was probably going to be used a different way in places and they look like they can't cave in but it's they're always on top uh, for you so um cyrus you're actually um standing at the top and you're standing on that little mound at the moment and just to let you know um it's roughly um sort of like half two um now that you're in there so right. um high tides at seven as previously stated okay well the best thing to do um i'm gonna do my special thing and light up a little bit so that way we can see our way through okay cool. um, i'm going to roll fire blade Excellent. Barleby is probably like pulling out his lantern, but then seeing that um, the sorcerer of the group is chanting. Then that's not. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, roll your folk magic. Um, you can take. Um, I'm going to. I'll use my last point. Well, you can actually take thing. minutes if you wish. So taking. Oh yeah, I guess yeah, I can do that. Taking cool. minutes over spell casting just knocks it down to easier, and there's no hurry um, at this point. And that sort of like um, flares up the the area, and yeah, so that allows you to see, and you can see that this corridor um, definitely sort of like opens out. I'll reveal a little bit more of it. Okay. So you can see that. Uh, so um, Hazard, are you back? Hazard's back. Yeah. Okay then. Um, so just to let you know, um, anything that is this color is water. Mm -hmm. Anything that color is for Hazra's, um, that's level one. And can you see that tiny little bit of copper in that corner? Yeah. That would be level two. Um, so Hazra, um, you can see that there's a water-filled um, corridor um, going to your, mm. um, to your so right. So this is calf level. That's I mean, sort of like waist level. No, um, this um, is calf level. This, yep. you're out of the water. Oh, sorry, you're stepping up. Level. Right, yeah, sorry. so you're right, stepping okay. up a level. And then the copper colours, you're stepping up another level um, altogether. Wonderful. Not yeah. a huge amount. It's only about, you know, like out of 30, 30 centimetres. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that you notice, just all of you at the same time, is that... Um, it almost it doesn't look like this this looks quite natural it it obviously hasn't been um altered um in any way it's purely um natural and you do feel 
um, especially Hengis as you look around the back uh, out to sea that when the tide comes in it will flood this tunnel yeah so there would not be the high tide would go up above it so what you're seeing now is where the tunnels have drained out and hence when there's lits, lits of bits of water everywhere rather than um when tide comes in the water will just come well it's put it won't gush in it a slowly um fill up so you know so yeah hasra you're you're in in the lead at the moment um well hasra being hasra will head for high ground as fast as possible okay then. so you can if so you... he wants to move yeah he wants to go from here to here if, if he can uh, yeah so that that will um so cyrus has your light source um so I follow yeah okay then we'll follow up then everybody can um move um up and let me just reveal a bit more of the area for you so you can see that there's um, what appears to be um, a float um, a water filled area to your north um, so this land um, here is like another 30 foot up and then you can also see that this corridor um, carries on which way, guys? Um, Hengis, can you just roll for me a perception check? Since it looks like you're guarding that back tunnel at the moment. Okay. Are you using... Which way did you see the light earlier, Hazra? Um, um, the, the eyes were just in, in, in the cave entrance. Yeah. There's no uh, difference that... Move it in a boat. Hmm, okay. Well, we can go up or down there, but I don't really think we should split up, even though it would make sense to cover more ground. No, we, we should I, not split up. I no. think this is, a, this is a dangerous area, and I think it would be best if we were all together for just in case we ran into any trouble. That's true, but we do need to be as quick as we can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice one, Hengis. Quick as you can before I we all. Well, you if you were trapped we, we were in all ground. Yeah. If you were <laughs> before trapped I ruined in here, my yeah. suit. Um, and next week, guys, we unveil our new characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a new GM. Yeah. Um, it, it's, let's, it's uh, fine. I I I I made a pajamas like every other jokes about. Let's go. Let's go above. Let's go. Uh, I, I don't know if I can paint. Uh, there? Yeah, that direction. Let's go up. Okay. And this will be drawing his sword at this point, by the way. Right, yeah, I will assume that everybody has got their weapons mm. or something um, appropriate out. Uh, right, Barnaby, you, you, have, you, have, you have your weapons out, right? Um. Well, yeah. He does have a club. Of his hands are his weapons. And they hold up a basic club. It's like a Hey guys, I'm don't take the mic. I've seen Barcelona be take down a goblin. Yeah, I'm starting to feel and bullied the giant here. Centipede. And... <laughs> Hell. But they so did have help with the giant centipede. I, I'm yeah. assuming that I'm going to assume that um, whenever um, you're moving, you're moving to the next um, almost like cavern. Um, yeah. yeah. Until yeah. until something um, actually happens. Until a gribbly jumps out at us. So I like to move one inch at a time <laughs> and then do a, a perception. So this is what you can actually um, see at the moment, if that makes sense. So um, this, the, this here um, seems to be a, um, a passage, um, but the first thing, so this is like a level above this level. So just like an island. Yeah. In the, so yeah. so currently, um, Hazza and Cyrus, you're stood on dry dry land, when um, Ben, Bartby, and Hengis are stood in calf deep water. 
Um, so this is all sort of like um, out of the water. You notice that this tunnel here um, seems to have water in it. Um, mm -hmm. This tunnel here seems to have a bit of water. You can just see it at the edge there. Uh, I'll just reveal a little bit more for you so you can see it. So mm -hmm. it looks half and half. Um, this area um, definitely just looks like ground. All right. Well, um, take the high ground. Okay, Anakin. <laughs> it's actually Obi Wan. Obi Wan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 Hash would always go to the high ground. He would look at. Okay. Yeah. So we're watch. we're all moving um, through this um, to the next chamber. So what I'm going to do, I'm going yeah. to, I'm going to move you through to the next chamber. And All then right. I can des then just reveal it, which will be easier. It's a trap. It's full of explosive barrels. <gasps> um, it's a trap. A thieves guild. Oh my god. Okay, so this, this, you, this you, can, you can see that this comes into almost like. Um, an area again mm. um there seems to be the remnants of water um round about and you um hengis can you just uh make a perception check for me can you can just i say but he makes it this thing whatever's there is gonna be like Right, uh, I, it's just sort of like I just don't think Hengis is <laughs> breathing on his. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like he, no, he only notices because his cheek cheek plate starts to mist up on yeah. the outside. It's just sort of like uh, Hengis is not the best rear guard for noticing things. Okay, no. so you um you sort of like come around um this in this sort of like area. This is higher um higher ground, and you can see that the corridor goes off this way, tunnel goes At off this, this point, way. Can Hashra make his, um, um, I'm going to say, hopefully my tracking skill to to work out whether this north passage doubles back on itself? Or, do you know, like you have that innate sense of direction when you're going somewhere, you go, oh, oh gosh, would we go north and this thing's going back down there and it might I think go back to where it's going underground. And I think I remember the last time you were underground, Hasra wasn't happy about it. No, he wasn't, but I hope you forgot about it because he's not happy about it. But yeah, okay. That was his tongue speaking. Yeah, so you sort of like, um, th there is something that you notice about this cavern mm. and you all see it uh, as you look around. There seems to be some kind of green seaweed. It seems to be hanging from the majority of the wall. Um, it's not right the way up to the ceiling, um, but it is almost there and you can actually see that it seems to be hanging not it seems to be flush against the wall and then just sort of like straight down and um, it's almost like kelp so it's mm. quite leafy and it seems to be green it seems to still be quite wet and damp and it's actually i'll, I'll draw it on where it is because it's not um everywhere um in the map on the map it's sort of like, like that. Mm. And it, you, you can see that it, you're not too sure how it's hanging on the wall from this distance, but it's definitely hanging on the wall. And there, there seems to be a good amount of it. Does it seem to be like shrouding, like um, maybe something behind it? Or is it easily just on the wall? Um, you're not too sure from this distance. I mean, there could be another tunnel entrance off to it, or it could be flat uh, against the um, wall. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna approach with my uh, wave, kind of like, uh, you know, shine my light ne near it as uh, as I approach. Yeah, yeah so maybe kind of 
travel throughout the entire wall, see if I'd see anything noticeable. Okay, so move to where you want to start, and then you can start looking around. Okay, then, mm -hmm. um, Hazra, um, Bartleby, Ben, and Hengis, what would you like to do while um, Cyrus is looking? Um, so Hengis will have um, noticing that we're stopping to explore this cave. He'll be turning around to look behind us, keeping out behind us from now on. Okay, no way. Um, Hazra. Um, he's looking at these walls and he's looking at the water rising slightly and he's feeling a little bit more um, uncomfortable with his surroundings. So he's going to take a step back up onto this island. No, oh, sorry. And he's just going to be looking everywhere. Okay. Like that pensive look where you're like, oh, what's that? Yeah. What's that? Just, just roll your willpower. Mm, silly. There we go. That's the house we know and love. Yeah, and you're you're really sort of like um, taken back by this. Not only are you underground, mm. but you're actually trapped. Uh, yes, the, the adrenaline got me in here. <laughs> yeah. And now it's worn off. And you sort of like um, come over here, and Ben sort of like comes up. Bartleby, what what are you going to be doing? Um. Barleby is thinking of the stories behind this cave, and so he would like to perform the prayer witch site to see if there's any spooky ghosts or okay. magical yeah. things emanating from this place. And here is my folk. Oh, oh nice! That's two criticals. <clears throat> so that doesn't Ooh, take God, you cast that without fire. any loss of magic points. So it just sort of like comes off. Um, which is the one that um, actually gives you points back. Um, That's just anything Bartleby does. Anything. You know. No, yeah, um, critics look at magic points cost is zero. Uh, and then that's it. Okay then, so um, you cast your um, witch site. Witch site. Um, Cyrus, as you're moving along, you, mm -hmm. you notice that this kelp, the seaweed, is not actually attached to the wall at all. It's draped over what seems to be some hemp wool, hemp rope that has been um, almost like um, trapped in like um, nails, hefty mm -hmm. nails that have been whacked into the wall. And so it, it seems to just be draped over. Um, but roll your insight for me. Now roll your idea roll. Idea roll would be um, the one um, intelligence times five. The ones you know, so, the, the okay. two things that I got you to um, create people are um, your yeah. intelligence mm -hmm. one is idea roll, and your other one is memory. If I ever need to use got it, it. all right. So I just need to, I'm just gonna roll one 100, and yeah. uh, my idea is a 60. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. So nice. So you sort of like look at this and you move things around and, and everything and it suddenly dawns to you that this is a it's not growing here it's being stored here and it, it looks like it almost like looks as if it's being brought from somewhere else then draped over this ro um, rope this hemp rope mm -hmm. there's nothing behind it apart from the actual the rock and you do notice that it's sort of like it's not drying out you figure that this cavern is definitely underwater at the mm -hmm. high tide and now it's just sort of like um slowly dripping water um, it, it's very very moist um, but that's about it and Bartby, you cast your um a witch site around the room and strangely it is there's not even any background magic that there, there's no background magic at all if anything you're slightly um disappointed that it's so um dull uh and and quite almost like a boring and and then i would like you all please to roll your perception If you want to use luck, now is the time to use it. 
<laughs> I think I do have uh, one of three points that I can still spend. Yeah, so you can just reverse yours to 28. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Hengis? Azra's still first is... looking at every direction. Hengis, um, you don't hear anything, even with you. just make it worse. Yeah, <laughs> even with your point of luck. However, um, Bartleby, Hasra, and Cyrus, you definitely um, hear something. And it's quite rhythmic. It seems to be a regular, slow, almost like dampened sound of a drum being beaten. It just seems to go big going boom, boom, boom. And this is the time for anybody to quote, say, drums in the drums. deep. The drums in the deep. <laughs> if you see. Good. Uh, and, and that will be where we oh. leave it. We hear, do we, do oh. we hear an echo? <laughs> Throw yourself in next time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fool of a your talk. stupidity. Um, could could Hasra, before he forgets, make a memory test to Sounds like, like the Batrachians. The, the, the ritual they had. Oh, Batrachian ritual. Yeah, yeah, I remember what you mean. With the drums. You, yeah, you don't. Know, it does. It sounds like um, almost like thick leather hide over a drum. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't sound tinny like a snare drum. It sounds definitely like um, hide or skin stretched over something mm. and to make it tight. Um, just so you know, um, Hengis, you don't hear it at all, um, but the rest of you hear it from here. Got it. Okay, so um, you're probably, everybody's probably, I'm just moving, everybody's no, no, like no, this. We'll that here. Um, yeah. Okay, then, and that's where we uh, call it um, a night. Medivac, is, is somebody, why is there a big, Mr. Pickles, are you black? Have you decided to have black as your colour on, on... Oh, okay. That's... <laughs> uh, yeah, I was a little conf confused there. Um, <laughs> His colour's gone. Uh, I picked transparent for my colour. Oh. Are you goth? Well, I realised I was holding on to green and that maybe Hengus would like green because he's holding on to red and maybe... <laughs> oh. you know, so I thought I'll solve this problem oh. by just being transparent because I couldn't find the color that's like my ring and so uh, yeah, could, have, could have been blue <laughs> anyway okay then um, that is where we're going to leave it um, for tonight I just went straight through without a break people but I saw you going off to have bathroom breaks so that's absolutely fine um, yeah we will be back next week um, when the party will definitely probably encounter um, what is actually happening in the cave. They're really up against the time limit now. This is really going to... And when people say they're doing minutes and there's crossing... I'm oh. <laughs> hating it. <laughs> you know, so... Like, yeah, well, just out of interest, you might want to start thinking because the boat's gone. Yeah. I've been thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's not a good time. Like, I don't know how to swim, I don't think. I but don't yeah, well, do, you do have a swim skill. Yeah. yeah. We're going to beat uh, Angus Angus Star, like, into a boat. And we'll be yeah. fine. You, you have, yeah. have a swim skill. You do have a swim you skill. Aerial, mate. You, just can't, you just yeah. can't swim in your metal armor that's the he thing can. he can but he just, won't make just, it out of the metal armor it down. takes him, it take it takes ages to get out of so that sort it's, of armor it's almost like straps. hengis see what's on Don't the bottom the of the ocean for us <laughs> how deep is it let's send hengis in <laughs> yeah we no we can't see him it must be deep <laughs> end of <laughs> we need to start a new float. It's going to be called deep sea rescue diving. Uh, cool. I'll look forward. To strap an I look to forward. Back and he's got his. He's got his pressure suit already. Brilliant. Okay. Um, thank you for coming along and watching us tonight. Do come back to next week. Don't forget that my podcast went live today. Um, it's only um, ten minutes long, um, if that. So, um, and it's about flies. I'll just say nothing more. So do go along. It's on Spotify as well. And it will be on Apple, etc., etc. So do go. Along. It's called the In Will's What interview. 
Thank you for your stream. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you, Bunny Box. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for everybody. Thank you to the players. And yeah, come back next week to see what actually happens and whether or not the party gets out or get extremely wet either one or the other um i will be back streaming tomorrow at two o'clock with some elder scrolls online until then please stay safe stay healthy and yeah just listen out for those drums in the deep see you all later people bye oh bye. You're, you're, you're just waving okay then <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs>